The opening act of the 1992 Oregon football drama brings the high-powered offense of the Hawaii Rainbows to Watson Stadium. Michael Carter returns from an excellent sophomore season at quarterback. But expect to see Ivan Jasper to share the spotlight off the bench. A double dose of trouble for the Ducks. Oregon's fortunes rest on the return of quarterback Danny O'Neill. A healthy season could be the difference for a duck turnaround. Sean Burwell is another key performer. He is finally 100% and he is ready to go. Well, I, I think everybody uh, connected with our program is anxious to get on the field and see if we can start on a new year rather than reminiscing about the old one, which was not a lot of fun. It is the Oregon Ducks versus the Hawaii Rainbows on Prime Sports Northwest. Welcome to Watson Stadium in Eugene on a warm, breezy afternoon. It's college football once again, the Oregon Ducks against the Hawaii Rainbows. Hello again, everybody. I'm Todd McKim, and once again, by popular demand, Ken Woody returns this year on the broadcast. And Ken, this is the kind of a game that both teams want to win very badly, not just the start of a new season, but hopefully an opportunity to forget what happened last year. The Rainbows were 4-7-1, and one, the Ducks were 3-8. and eight. Rich Brooks mentioned this spring that he had a foul taste in his mouth and only a win would make it go away. Let's take a look at Hawaii, first of all. They come in with not one, but two guys that can run that spread option offense. Very few teams have two quarterbacks who are very physical. In, in a way, they want to wear down the duck defense. Both of these guys can run the option extremely well. In fact, Hawaii last year was fifth in the nation in rushing offense, so they indeed can move the football. They averaged 32 points a game in 12 contests a year ago. As for the Ducks, last year was uh, one that was spent mostly in the medical room for most of these players. Uh, Danny O'Neill in particular, the starting quarterback, started the first five games. The Ducks were three and two, but he suffered a dislocated thumb in game number five. He's back, he's healthy, and he's ready to go. O'Neill got off to a great start. Seven touchdowns responsible, first two games. Had an off game against USC, was hurt, and then it was just a succession of injuries to quarterbacks, a, a, a nightmare. Burwell, on the other hand, is back and healthy. Uh, he's a spiritual leader to this Oregon offense. When he's there, the Duck coaches feel they can run the ball. The team expects that they can win, and it gives the fans a big lift, too. Well, both of these teams have certain things that they have to do to win this afternoon. Let's start, first of all, with the visiting Hawaii Rainbows. Well, the Hawaii Rainbows want to establish the run against the Ducks. Uh, they want to outrush them. The Ducks only won three games last year. Ironically, the only three games, they outrush their opponents. If they outrush them, they feel they have a chance to win. They want to rattle the offense. Last year, the Oregon offense did not stand up under pressure very well. They've seen that on film. That's a key to their win. As for the Ducks, they have to do certain things as well. They've got to find a leader, particularly on offense. Is it going to be Burwell, O'Neill? They have the ability. They've got to make that happen today. The Duck defense wants to make Hawaii pass. They're a, a very mediocre passing team. They're an outstanding running team. If the Duck defense can hold up against this rush, it should uh, bode well for the uh, the whole uh, winning effort. Well, this is the day that we've all been waiting for, the start of the college football season. They put on the pads, they strap on the helmets, and we are ready to go. Hope you are as well. Sit back and enjoy the Hawaii Rainbows against the Oregon Ducks on Prime Sports Northwest. Welcome back to Watson Stadium, where the Ducks and the Rainbows ready to kick off the 92 football season. It's a beautiful day for football. Temperature about 66 degrees. We have a breeze coming out of the north at about 15 miles an hour. Partly cloudy skies, ideal playing conditions this afternoon. You take a look at the series between the two teams. There have only been five previous contests. And the last time, it was all Hawaii as the Rainbows defeated the Ducks 41-17 Back in 1988, if you Oregon fans remember back then, that was the year the Ducks started off 6-1. and one. Bill Musgrave suffered a broken collarbone against Arizona State, and what uh, was to be a promising season ended up in disaster as the Ducks lost the final 
five games, including the season finale at Hawaii. The Ducks won the opening toss and have elected to defer their decision until the second half. So the Rainbows will take the pigskin dressed in their white and green uniforms with the rainbow sash down the side of the pants and the Ducks in their home uniforms, the green and the yellow. A crowd expected in the mid-30,000 range and they are all on their feet, excited and ready to go. Well, this is exactly what the, the coach was hoping for, some excitement in the stadium. The last time the Ducks played here, they lost to Oregon State in a dismal performance. Uh, the bitter taste remains, but they'd like to wash that clean this afternoon. Tommy Thompson will handle both the place kicking and punting chores. Uh, you take a look at Bob Wagner, the very successful coach of the Hawaii Rainbows, 4-7 and 1 last year, but he has done a remarkable job on the islands putting together a solid football team and a contender in the Western Athletic Conference. Todd, this is the loudest noise we've had for Oregon in six games since the USC game back in uh, October last year. So everyone wants to put last season behind them and the sooner the better. Well, you can see the wind already a factor blowing the ball off the tee. Thompson blessed with an outstanding uh, kicking leg. And now they will uh, maybe have to hold the ball. Interesting matchup today. Oregon and Hawaii both have kickers who handle place kicking and punting. Jason Elam, a preseason All-American. And Tommy Thompson for the Ducks. That'll be Rich Rule holding the ball for Thompson and now kind of the second burst of energy from the crowd. We are glad you are with us and you hope you enjoy Oregon football this season. The kickoff is a good one. Near side, that is Branch with the ball. Derek Branch. And he's wrestled down at the 16-yard line. Jeremy Asher, number 44, a reserve linebacker, a redshirt freshman from Portland, along with Alex Molden, the starting cornerback for the Ducks, a redshirt freshman at 15-yard return. And so Hawaii with possession of the football. You look at the quarterback, number three, Mike Carter. The spread option, in essence, two wide outs, two slot backs, and one running back. The one running back is Travis Sims. Carter to throw now. Eludes pressure and picks up about six yards. Interesting, Hawaii comes out first play and runs trips to the field. We're looking to look for two slot backs on either side of the tackles today. But Hawaii brought one of their slot backs to the far side of the field, trying to see if that Oregon defense is going to overshift. So it'll be second down and five from the 22. Now they have uh, Jasper is in the ball game and he'll get close to the first down, a little bit shy. So already we've seen Hawaii go with two quarterbacks, two plays, two quarterbacks. That time Carter lined up in a slot position John Tomo Payao made the stop for the Ducks. This is Tomo Payao's first starting assignment. Take a look at the backs and receivers, and now the offensive line. Amosa is the center, played a great deal last season. And we'll set that Oregon defense momentarily. Third and one. Trips formation near side, with the Derek Branch being the closest to, to the bottom of the screen. Jasper audibleizing. Jasper will keep. He's got the first down out to the 30-yard line. Gain of four. Tomo Payao once again on the stop. One thing about the Rainbows, when their quarterback is running the football, they've got a 200-pound running back uh, running the football, and the Ducks, have, they want to get physical with them right away, not let them get going. Well, and early we have an injury for Oregon, the starting nose tackle. As you look at the lineups, Molden making his first start. Salila Malapai, the starting nose tackle for the Ducks, comes out injured. And he's a guy that went to St. Louis High School in Honolulu. One of his best friends is the center for Hawaii, Lenny Amosa. Jasper to roll. Breaks containment and is hammered down by Paul Rodriguez, a late penalty flag after a gain of six. 
But we have a penalty flag back at the Hawaii 29 yard line. The right end, Jeff Cummins, number 99, is right there with the officials, and he apparently was involved either on the receiving end or the give E in a late hit. Apparently, it is against the Ducks. A personal foul. A tripping call against the defense. Not one you see very often. And it'll be another first down for Hawaii. Just underway here at Autzen Stadium. The opening game for both teams. This fits right into the Rainbow's uh, game plan. They want to get some momentum early, get the crowd back on their heels, try to make emotion be their friend in a rather unfriendly stadium. Jasper remains the quarterback with Carter in the slot, along with Kialoa. The wideouts are Branch and Gordon. Whistle and a penalty flag. Cummins, who had been uh, taken out for one play and replaced by DJ Cabrera, is now back in. And I think the penalty had been on at Cummins. He's a very emotional and an inspirational leader for Oregon. I think Coach Brooks just wanted to settle him down and make sure he was, uh, you know, doing what he was supposed to do. The other thing that you want to do is show your players they can't have penalties and you're going to take them out for a play. You're going to have to serve some kind of penance. First penalty of the game against Hawaii, so it's first and 15. Gary Williams now in at the nose. Jasper on the roll and all the way from the back side comes Ernest Jones to run him down after a gain of two. Well, Hawaii right now is trying to put pressure on the onside linebacker of getting out there and covering the option. Let that, that play, uh, Tomo Piao, here on the left side, you see him getting blocked by number 57. And if we don't get that backside help there, Hawaii's gonna have a big gain. These quarterbacks put a lot of pressure on their perimeter. Right now, they're putting three wide receivers to the field, trying to get the secondary to shift back so they can run the option back to the short side. Trips formation near side. Oregon uh, takes out one linebacker and inserts another defensive back. The deep throw, and it is caught for a touchdown. Oh, a magnificent reception in the corner by Derek Branch as he beat Devon Hosey, and the Rainbows are on the board. Well, so much for not being able to throw the football. Well, the Rainbows caught the Ducks in man-to-man -man coverage there, and Hosey was right with him. He allowed the receiver to get a little bit of separation. And as you can see, Hosey's trying to make it up here and has just out-jumped for the ball. And that's an excellent call by the official. The receiver gets his feet down right inside the pylon and in the end zone. 49-yard touchdown, Jason Elam in to attempt the extra point. And it is good. So Hawaii, with the first possession of the football game, marches 84 yards for the score. And with 11.54 to play in the first quarter, it's 7-0 Rainbows. The Rainbows strike first. Six plays, 83 yards. Only took them a little over three minutes to do it. The 49-yard touchdown pass from Jasper to Branch. And if there was any doubt that... Uh, Jasper could throw the football. He has certainly disdained that because that ball traveled about 55 yards in the air and right on the money. You know, he had a terrific spring and in the spring game for Hawaii, threw for four touchdowns, ran for another, and I think at that point, Bob Wagner decided, hey, we've got uh, another weapon here, and uh, although Carter had a wonderful season for us last year, we might be able to better utilize our offense by playing both of these guys. So Elam to kick it off. It's a high kick to the near sideline to be fielded by uh, Collins at the eight yard line. Bit of a crease out to the 25 where the Oregon offense will take over. Excuse me, that was Derek Deadweiler, number eight. So here comes the Oregon offense onto the field after a 19 yard return by Deadweiler. Danny O'Neill, the quarterback, the sophomore from Los Angeles. Three and two as a starter a year ago, accounted for nine touchdowns in the first four and a half games. And after he went out, the Oregon offense scored, what was it, five touchdowns in the last six games offensively. So they need him in the lineup. We'll set the rest of the troops in a moment. 
wideouts are Anthony Jones and Deadweiler. And in the backfield, the fullback is Juan Shedrick, Sean Burwell. O'Neill to throw on first down. Deadweiler, one foot inbound, out of bounds at the 43 and a first down. And that gets the crowd back into it. The Rainbows had everything their way that first drive, and the crowd was silent. That's something they want to do. Very a big play for the Oregon offense. Gets the crowd back into it. The alumni band is playing. <laughs> everything is back on track. That oh. Deadweiler can run, too. I tell you, when he catches the football, he is really a threat. He will be one to watch this year. Second down, they'll give it to Burwell. Left side. Punches out about four yards. Tackle by Junior Tag Goea. Take a look at the backs now. You see O'Neill, Jones, Burwell. Ferry is a captain at the tight end position in Derek Deadweiler. And then the line, you see Tom Kerr in the starting center. Third straight year, the Ducks have had somebody different starting in the middle. Tattersall, one of the other co-captains offensively. Defonzo, the junior college transfer, making his first start for the Ducks. Screen to Deadweiler. Has one blocker. Busts it. And gets into Hawaii territory at the 39-yard line. So the Ducks mixing it up. Pass, run, then pass, and have picked up two first downs. Deadweiler has brought a burst of speed to the Oregon offense that we didn't see the last five games of the year. We, I think we saw uh, pieces of this in the spring game last year. A lot more speed at the scoring positions for the Ducks. Watch this burst as Deadweiler gets up field. Pretty good block out there by Burwell. We have movement in the line and a penalty. Well, in the first game, uh, typically, you see many penalties. Already the Ducks have now committed two infractions, or I should say, if it's against them, this will be their second. Hawaii committed one infraction. The Ducks were the third best team in the Pac-10 last year as far as penalties are concerned. Dead ball file. Illegal contact defense. Five yard pass. Well, that's a free five, so that one will be the second penalty on Hawaii. Ducks actually did a nice job in the last half of the season. They were amongst the leaders first in penalties five. the first part. Did you watch the defensive line uh, line up for the Rainbows? The last part of the season, they got better in penalties. Give it to Burwell. And Burwell just gets a couple of yards. So it'll be second down and four. Near side comes Deadweiler. Burwell is in the slot. Anthony Jones far side. Now the lone back is Shedrick. O'Neill to pass. He's two for two. And this one a little bit short, intended for Deadweiler. So it'll be third down and four. Into the ball game for the Ducks comes an additional wide receiver, Ronnie Harris, the fastest of the wideouts. And out goes Burwell. In that the Ducks started the, the series here at first and five, it's real important that they convert this third down. Last year they converted 38.6% of their third down conversions. Big play here for the Oregon offense. Hawaii comes with a blitz. Good protection, and the ball is batted down at the line of scrimmage by Ma'a Tanabasi. Tanabasi is a guy they feel is very important in their defensive scheme. He was injured last year. They feel he's an impact player, kind of like a guy that used to play for the Rainbows and did very well in the NFL, Al Noga. When you compare somebody to Al Noga, that's a big comparison because he's made life miserable for quarterbacks in the NFL. Tommy Thompson in to attempt a 50-yard field goal. Doug Musgrave will be the holder. Jeff Cummins, the snapper. This ball is up. It has plenty of distance, but it's hooked a little bit to the left. And that ball, if it had been straight, would have been good from about 65. He has an explosive leg but he needs to improve on the accuracy, and so the Ducks on their first offensive possession move the football but come up a little bit short. 
So the Rainbows will take over their second offensive possession. The first time they went 83 yards for a touchdown. And we noticed that both Carter and Jasper are in the ballgame. Coming to the near side is Sai Hirota. They'll give it to the first man through, and that's the fullback, Travis Sims. He lunges forward for about two. We understand that Oregon starting nose tackle, Salila Malapai injured a right elbow. They say hyperextended. They will re-examine him, and his uh, status for the rest of the game is uncertain. So Gary Williams, a 6'2", 270-pounder, moves in at that nose tackle position. Now Jasper will keep, and he is hauled down from behind by Jeff Cummins. And then Cummins is popped by Joe Farwell. Excellent job by Cummins. He covered the interior part of the running play there and then jumped out and got the quarterback. And it's a good thing he did because the inside linebacker had been blocked. Late flag on the field in the secondary. Wide receiver and a defensive back got tangled up. This is a Pac-10 crew of officials. Well, that's an NFL call. Let's set the officials for this afternoon. Charles McFerrin is the referee. James Coyne is the umpire. The headlinesman, Dale Newhouse. Kathy Anderson, the line judge. William Gaskins, the field judge. Daniel Spichterbach is the side judge. The back judge is Kurt Dornan. Third down and nine. Blitz by the Ducks. Rodriguez. Jasper falls, this ball's underthrown and intercepted by Alex Molden at the Oregon 35. And that play was set up by great pressure by John Tomo Piao, who is down on the field right now. Alex Molden. That ball should not have been thrown. He just threw it up for grabs. Molden was in excellent position, came underneath the receiver you see here. And Hawaii is trying to burn the Ducks deep when they see man-to-man -man, uh, coverage. So Alex Molden making his first career start. He is a redshirt freshman from Colorado, Colorado Springs. And immediately he makes a big play. And Molden's the kind of a guy has a wealth of athletic experience or athletic ability. And uh, maybe one of the best corners the Ducks have had in quite some time. But the concern is with John Tomo Payal looking at the left leg. Tomo Payal taking the place of James Batista, who graduated. Tomo Payal, a reserve player with outstanding quickness, has all the athletic attributes that you're looking for in a linebacker. But now the concern is the injury. So that's two defensive starters for the Ducks that have gone out early in this game. Well, right now the Oregon coaches got to be asking uh, themselves, is, is this, is this going to be a trend or what? Well, as Tomo Payao heads to the sidelines, we'll take a commercial break and be right back. As we return to play, Sean Burwell with the football, and Burwell showing that elusive running ability that he has. Picks up eight close to the 45-yard line. We and you can just see the enthusiasm of the Oregon offense as Burwell establishes himself. Nice block by the fullback there. Juan Shedrick with a good block. Tattersall with a nice kick out block as well. And Burwell had some nice daylight. Hawaii is leading it 7-0, eight and a half minutes to go first quarter. O'Neill with all kind of time over the middle. An incomplete intended for Derek Detweiler. Deadweiler flat dropped that pass. O'Neill put it right on the money. Excellent protection by the Oregon offensive line. And I would say that the uh, Rainbow secondary, a little bit inexperienced, not a very physical secondary, will be giving the Oregon receivers a lot of room for intermediate routes. Well, last year, Hawaii was last against the pass in the Western Athletic Conference and 106th in the NCAA. Burwell breaks a tackle and because of that gets a first down into Hawaii territory at the 47 yard line. Mita Lee Lee on the tackle along with Salvador the strong safety but Sean Burwell 
Boy, he just means so much to this Oregon offense. The Ducks are thin at the tailback position. Donovan Moore unavailable for this game. Sprained an ankle two weeks ago in the fall camp. So Burwell's backup is a redshirt freshman, Ricky Whittle, who also missed extended time in the fall with a groin injury. Shedrick plows forward inside the 45, gain of about three. So Any offense is going to want to average four yards a pop on first down. And right now, the Ducks are th three out of four. It's going to be three out of five plays now. That's not too bad. Ronnie Harris back in. Burwell out. As Danny O'Neill gets the signals from the sidelines, relayed into him. Mike Bellotti, the offensive coordinator and the defensive coordinator. Danny Schuler this year moved up to the press box area so they are not on the sidelines instead it'll be the other coaches responsible for helping O'Neill is sacked good defense by Hawaii as uh, coming in to make the play is Al Alipua that play was also set up uh, Juan Shedrack number 24 put his head down as you can see and just missed and that's uh, that's definitely a breakdown in the Oregon offense so it's the quarterback sack, an area of concern for Oregon. Last year, they did not do a good job of protecting the passer. They allowed 34 sacks. So instead of being second down and about seven, now it's third down and 15. Four-person rush. O'Neal fumbles. It's up for grabs. This ball can be returned if recovered by Hawaii. They've got it. And the Rainbows pick off the fumble. Junior Tagoea picks it up. And so immediately, the Rainbows now have the football at the Oregon 31-yard line. Well, O'Neal forgot a cardinal rule for a quarterback. When you get a, in, a, in a pressure situation where you feel the, packet, the pocket collapsing, right here, get that ball under control with two hands. He tried to swim the, the defender with the ball and had it knocked loose. That's very poor fundamentals. So the Rainbows now with an excellent opportunity to tack on to their lead. They lead it 7 to nothing. Jasper comes out on the option, has all kind of daylight. Runs through the attempted tackle of Molden and has a first down at the 19. The Joe Farwell, the inside linebacker, made the stop, but not before another Hawaii first down. And the Ducks have not shown any ability to stop the option attack by Hawaii. Farwell got there, but he was way, way, way late. The, the Rainbow offensive tackles are doing a nice job of, of kind of glomming up the defense and keeping the backside linebacker from getting in on the option. It's hurt the Ducks two times so far. Branch near side in the slot is Gordon. Come with a little counterplay to Travis Sims, and he just muscles his way forward for five more down to the Oregon 14-yard line. Jeff Cummins hanging on for dear life at the bottom of the pile, along with Ernest Jones and Tony Coker. Well, I'm impressed with the Hawaii uh, game plan so far. They're trying to use their receivers to create an imbalance in the Oregon secondary so that they can operate against the Oregon inside linebackers. So far, they're doing a very good job of it. They give it to Sims again, a gaping hole, and Sims is down near the goal line. Fumble, the ball is up for grabs. Who has it? It is recovered by Hawaii, but was he out of bounds or was it a touchdown? It's a touchback. It's a touchback and a huge break for Oregon. Hawaii recovered the fumble. However, it was ruled initially that the man that recovered the fumble was out of bounds. Will they now mark it back at the one yard line? Was the initial ball carrier down? Boy, this is a tremendous situation. Hawaii does not appear to like what the arbiters are discussing. And you look at that man, Rich Brooks, and well, if Rich Brooks has got a pre-law major, he needs to get him out there and make sure that they're represented well in this argument. Well, that's a tough break for Hawaii. Hawaii did a great job. David Massey was blocked. They ran right through his area on the left side. The ball is knocked away. This is one thing Coach Schuler said. The defensive players were made more aware of this year. They've got to go after the ball, try to create fumbles. Only recovered five the entire season. This is a big fumble recovery. Well, it doesn't really go as a fumble recovery, I guess. What, uh, it just goes as a touchback. So they'll mark the ball at the one where the ball was fumbled. 
So the good news is the Ducks have the football. The bad news is they have it at their own one. They give it to uh, Juan Shedrick, and he does a nice job of just fighting and getting about three yards out to the four-yard line. Mita Lee Lee, a six-foot, 240-pound junior from Oahu, made the stop for the Rainbows. You see on the replay, they're going for the football. You can make the call. He's out, definitely out of bounds as he secures possession, so the ball was in bounds, but the receiver, the person who recovered the fumble, ruled to be out of bounds, thus the touchback. O'Neill to throw from his own end zone. Again, for the second time, has a pass deflected in the middle by Ma'a Tanabasa. So the Hawaii defense, not known and reputed to be uh, extremely physical or active, Right now, if the Ducks cannot get a first down, the coaches would prefer they get enough yardage so their punter, if they should be forced to punt, Thompson will not have to shorten his uh, steps or his normal distance between him and the center. O'Neill is unsure of the play called from the sidelines. He wants and gets a timeout. So with five minutes exactly to play in the first quarter, it's the Rainbows leading at 7 0. We'll be back in a moment. State, this Tuesday, catch the Big Sky Conference in football action as the St. Cloud State Huskies take on the Idaho Vandals tomorrow night at 7 Pacific here on Prime Sports Northwest. Back here at Otson Stadium, the Ducks faced with a third down and seven from their own five-yard line. Deadweiler near side, that's Anthony Jones in motion. O'Neill will roll. Caught by Burwell, he's got the first down and out of bounds and then hit very late in the penalty flag, three of which come flying into the play at the Oregon 19. So you'll tack on 15 more yards there and you go from having the ball third and seven at your own five, Ken, to having a first down out around the 35. Excellent play for the Ducks. Burwell converts this third down, the first conversion for the Ducks in three attempts. And this is difficult, a late hit like that against a player who's relaxing can really lead to an injury. That's a, that's a flagrant foul. I might add that Shedrack does a nice job here of staying up on his pass block, not putting his head down and missing like he did the last time. That's just a blatant penalty. That really is. Those are the that's kind almost of grounds for disqualification in my mind. That's a leg breaker. Well, that was Addison with the late hit, and I guess you can't blame him. He hasn't hit anybody for two years in a game. He's missed two seasons for a number of reasons, but he's back in this year, and they think he's an all-whack performer. And once again, we have penalty flags as... It appeared to be Hawaii jumping off sides again. Uh, Oregon offensive line showing good discipline. Well, that's a massive offensive front five for the Ducks. Uh, maybe the biggest offensive line Oregon has ever had. When you look at the right side, uh, actually they go quick side, strong side is there. Illegal contact by the defense. Five yard penalty. The Ducks go quick side, strong side in their terminology and formational lineups this year. But at the strong tackle, Steve Harden, 6'7", 300-pound sophomore. The right tackle, or the strong guard, I should say, should be Mike DeFonso, 6'4", 295. The quick guard, John Tattersall, 6'4", 280. And the quick tackle, David Collinsworth, 6'5", 285. Tom Kearns, the little guy in there, he goes about 260. Burwell tries the left side, not much there. Good job at the point of attack by Hawaii, so it'll be second down and four. Making the tackle, Lou Randall for Hawaii. He's the rover back for them. 5'10", 206-pound senior from Los Angeles. One of the few guys that played most of last year. Hawaii was decimated defensively, especially in the line area last year. They started in their front three guys. They started nine different players. Counter play to Burwell. Spins forward and see, that's what Sean Burwell does that the other Oregon backs haven't been able to do. He gets that additional yardage after the contact, and he gets the first down. Lee Lee made the stop. Well, if I'm a running back coach, I, another thing I really like about Burwell is that when he makes a cut, he gets off that cut and heads it upfield. He goes north and south. When he's tackled, he's always going straight ahead. He's not get, getting caught going sideways. A lot of the situation that Duck running backs found themselves in last season. Burwell, 29 yards on six attempts this afternoon in the first quarter. Pass, 
almost intercepted, intended for Derek Deadweiler, but getting a paw up there was Stuart Williams, an outside linebacker, a junior from Honolulu. Excellent job by Williams of getting depth there, getting underneath the route. O'Neill had Deadweiler open. Had he thrown the ball a little bit higher, it would have gone over the outside linebacker, but it would have been complete. So far, uh, Deadweiler's been getting a lot of room to run in the secondary. Just a case of the Ducks finding some routes they can get him the ball to. Draw play to Burwell. Gets back to the line of scrimmage and that is it. Here's a great example of what we were just talking about. They had him going sideways. He turned it upfield and got two yards. Junior Tagoy made the stop for the Rainbows. He's out of Seattle, so he's returning to the mainland. Last year he led the team in, ta in the sacks with six. Ducks one for three on third down conversion so far. Four wide receivers in the game for Oregon. Hawaii will send five rushers. Good pass protection. O'Neill unsure, and he's sacked. Good coverage in the secondary. He tried to get the ball to Deadweiler. I think that's the guy he was trying to find in that secondary, but he was double covered, and O'Neill sacked once again. You see Shedrick on the right-hand side of the, does a nice job of coming back and blocking 91, which was not his initial responsibility. And a good job by Mita Lee Lee. He looked like he was acting as a spy on O'Neill. So he just stayed at home in the middle. And so the Ducks will have to boot it away. Thompson's first punt of the season. Last year, Tommy had four blocked. Didn't have the uh, net average as he has had in the past, but he did a great job putting the ball inside the 20. This one a spiral. Branches back. It bounces, bounces, and into the end zone for a touchback. So Thompson with a 55-yard punt. No return, the net is 35, and so Hawaii takes over at the 20 yard line. Well, you're looking at a young man right there, number 10, Tony Graziani, who the Ducks are very high on for the future. They would prefer not to play him this year, but he wasn't uh, necessarily highly recruited, but the Ducks uh, were able to land him, and in the fall camp, he's been extremely impressive, and uh, the quarterback of the future. Right now, the quarterback of the present for the Ducks is Danny O'Neill. Jasper remains the quarterback, give up, uh, I should say, the fake up the middle. Jasper gets loose in the secondary, and he's out with another first down to the 34-yard line. So Jasper's making the right decisions, and uh, Oregon defensively uh, hasn't been able to make the adjustments to stop that option. The outside linebackers are covering the dive. Quarterback is reading that, coming back around outside. Now Farwell was blocked again. They're, they're, the Ducks are counting on the inside linebackers of covering the quarterback. So far, they've done a poor job of it may require some adjustments from the press box. Jasper from the backside, Jones has him, and then making the tackle and getting credit for it will be Romeo Banderson, a gain of only two. Nice job by the Ducks. They loosened up their front there and widened things. They were playing the option, something like that with an option called, you're gonna probably have to turn it inside. Right now, I think the Ducks would rather force them to run inside than allow that quarterback outside. A minute and a half to go in the first quarter. Hawaii leading 7-0. They scored on a, their first possession of the ball game. Marched 83 yards for the touchdown. Jasper to Branch, a 49-yard pass. Draw play to Sims. He runs right by Farwell. And somebody holding on for dear life at the bottom of the pile. It might have been Bandison. But Sims picks up four. Marked just short of the 40-yard line. The Rainbows need to get to the... 44 for a first down. Sims a big guy as far as uh, his body type. Six uh, foot, 219 pounder. So he's got that low center of gravity. Also from the Seattle area, Federal, Federal Way, Washington. Oregon with containment. That's Paul Rodriguez, and he dumps Jasper out of bounds. A loss of 10 yards back at the 30-yard line. So Paul Rodriguez, the strong safety, coming up on the containment and force, and Hawaii will have to boot it away. That's the same play Hawaii ran for their first touchdown. The outside receiver runs straight down the field, inside receiver to the flat. Ducks uh, allowed a touchdown the first time, intercepted the second, and then Rodriguez here sacks the quarterback on the third attempt. Very uh, basic kind of pass play, and right now the Oregon defense is really 
uh, risen to the challenge. Got to do a little better job of covering the quarterback on the option. Back in single safety at the 30 is Brian Brown. A booming spiral by Elam. A tremendous punt. Then Brown backs up and fields at the 20. Tries to get to the outside, but didn't have uh, enough speed to do it. Good coverage by Hawaii. Elam is, you know, was their place kicker. This is his fifth year, actually. He redshirted one year after only playing a couple of games, but has taken over the punting assignments. Now we have an injured Oregon player down at the 22-yard line. A 51-yard punt and about a three-yard return. And Brian is the injured player. Poor Brian's had a rough camp. He has been injured and has not gotten the reps that he wanted to get back there. And this is the third Oregon player that has been injured in the first quarter. Well, you don't like to see those. In evaluating Oregon's demise last year, the one thing that stood out in the kicking game is the absence of a dynamic return man, either in uh, punt returns or kickoff returns. The Ducks had, had, have always had a good return man. And you can see in this case, uh, their main return man's gonna hurt his knee. Right there, the defender's right knee buckled into his left. Boy, I'll tell you what, those are those kind of things that happen full speed, they're an accident. But uh, the defensive back's total weight was on the back of Brown's knee as he was trying to cut. They're bringing out a stretcher right now. Brian Brown, a junior from Yuba City, California. Last year in a reserve role, had 16 receptions. And he's back there on punt returns. You alluded to the fact that Brian Brown might not have the uh, greatest speed in the world, but he's very sure-handed, and he's a big guy, 6'2", 195. And the thought is that, you know, if he can break the arm tackle, popping it up the middle, then he's got a chance to do some damage. Well, it's, it's unusual to have a, a kid that size as a return man. And frankly, I think the Ducks have got some kids in the wings, not as big, but got some more breakaway potential. But you know, it's not all the return man. He's got to have good blocking, and uh, frankly, you got to force him to punt enough so that you can set up your returns. Well, they'll take Brian Brown uh, back into the locker room area. I'm sure examine that knee, x-ray it, see exactly what the problem is, and we hope that it's not serious and that he won't have to miss too much time. 30 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Ducks with the football. They've been in Hawaii territory twice. Had one opportunity to attempt a field goal, but a 50-yarder was a wide left. O'Neill to roll, dump pass, Shedrick can't hold on to it. Well, O'Neill was looking downfield at his tight end and at the last second decided to throw it in the flat. And you could see he didn't get his body turned around, threw it across his body and threw Shedrick a pass that was very difficult to handle. Well, O'Neill started off uh, well, but uh, is now struggled. He's only three for nine for 45 yards. And remember, he hit his... Nice job of protection. This ball is out in the flat, intended for Jones, and uh, had Anthony been able to catch up to that thing, he had clear sailing down the... Burden. This is becoming uh, too much like last year. Four injured players in the first quarter. And well, again, it looks like some kind of a leg injury. For 77, Steve Harden, the injured duck. Well, Steve Harden has had a tremendous fall camp. A big guy, 300 pounder, and he's really come on. Strengthened himself in the legs so that he could have good balance. And now, the starting strong tackle goes down. Well, the other thing about injuries, obviously it hurts you if you lose a kid, but when someone sits lay, is laying on the turf and everyone's wondering what's going on, this takes away a lot of momentum. It takes, you know, it just kind of deflates you. It can deflate the crowd, it can deflate the team. Oregon is struggling right now to, to try to get some kind of momentum. You mentioned O'Neal. O'Neal's had receivers open. The protection outside of the one where uh, the fullback missed his man, the, the, the protection has been there. Last year, not quite so much. Uh, O'Neill's just got to hit the open man. And Anthony Jones was open down the sidelines, and it looked like there had been a, a secondary coverage mix-up on Hawaii's fault, but just couldn't get him the ball soon enough. 
been talking to Steve Greatwood before the game about the offensive line situation at Oregon, and they were quite happy with it. They felt like they had eight players who could play uh, a lot more depth than last year. They're a little bit concerned at center, uh, hoping that uh, Howington uh, could get himself uh, prepared. They're hoping to, that he could see some action today. They feel that uh, he's really the man of the future in the middle, but that Tom Curran had come back from an injury this spring and played well. Well, the big problem for uh, Harden is that they already used the cart to take Brown in, and now he's got to limp off with a little bit of assistance. I mean, they're running out of carts, and they're running out of trainers. That looks like an ankle injury, and uh, if a guy walks off like that, uh, you know it's not a knee injury or a serious knee injury, so from that standpoint, we'll keep the fingers crossed. Back to the action. It's third and 10 from the 23. Oregon trying to get its offense in gear. Screen to the wide receiver, Deadweiler. He's close to the first down, but he's going to be about a yard shy. Did a good job of weaving his way through the potential tacklers and came up just a little bit shy. So the Ducks will have to punt it away, and the clock will run out. And that will be the final play of the first quarter, we believe, unless the Ducks called a timeout. Well, the Ducks might have tried to do a timeout there to take advantage of the wind. And it, that's what they did. Good move by the coaching staff. That makes a big difference. Makes a big difference punting with the wind as opposed to it. It's about gusting to 15 to 20 today. Well, in the Hawaii uh, sidelines, as the official made that call, five headsets came flying off coaches' heads down there. They were very upset. They felt that the Ducks did not call the timeout prior to the quarter being concluded. The bad thing about this, though, is that the Ducks now have used two of their timeouts. They have one more left in the first half. Well, the, in a situation like this, this may mean 10 or more yards on the punt, so it's a situation where I think a, a real good move. The first time, O'Neill used the timeout, and that happened a couple times last year when quarterbacks were confused, and I guess early on, a timeout that saves a turnover or a big play for the other team is a timeout well spent. Especially in Danny's case, when the team was backed uh, in the shadow of its own goalpost, you make a mistake at the five yard line and you're probably gonna give up six points. Well, the story of the first quarter has been the Hawaii offense, which uh, on its first possession, went 83 yards for a score, culminated on a 49-yard pass play from Jasper to Branch. Well, and the other thing is Oregon right now has got to say, hey, we've got to make field position work for us. We can shut down the pass. We want to make them run, make them have the long field, and we'll get back into the game. Thompson's first punt of the afternoon was a 55-yarder. Branch is in single safety inside of his own 25-yard line. He's a very good return man. Thompson, a wobbling spiral. Branch will field at the 25. Does a good job of eluding the first wave and then is uh, nailed by DJ Cabrera, another former St. Louis High School star in Honolulu, trying to uh, do his best against some of his old friends this afternoon. Well, that officially ends the first quarter of play after a 43-yard punt and an eight-yard return. We'll be back from Autzen Stadium with the Rainbows leading the Ducks seven to nothing. Brands that nobody. Prime Sports Northwest, home of the Pac-10. Well, as uh, we return to Watson Stadium to begin the second quarter, the Rainbows keep it on the ground and grind out another first down as Sims picks up 11 yards out to the 44-yard line. So good mix of uh, option attacking by uh, Hawaii. They you know, pound the middle with Sims, and then they run the option with the quarterback. Again, it's Sims. This time he's met and gains only two. The one thing Coach Schuler told us before the game, the Hawaii run offense is a, a series of companion plays. Every play is built on another one, and that's what puts a lot of pressure on the linebackers. You, put, you get on them to, to run outside and get on the quarterback in the, uh, in the option, and now they're running the ball inside on them. See the first down statistics. Uh, 
the big difference total yards on the one big pass play 49 yarder. In fact I think it's the only pass play that Hawaii has completed this afternoon. Inside again but uh, Jeff Cummins from his left defensive end crashing down hard Sims was able to only get two. Jasper the quarterback has uh, taken every snap other than the first snap of the ball game. See Cummins in there that co-captain defensively he missed most of last year with a toe injury a bizarre toe injury on the third play at Texas Tech third and six ducks are in man coverage pass pressure by Jones Jasper in trouble gets out of containment but Massey doesn't get him he didn't get him or did he he got him he got him at the 48 and that's about a yard and a half shy of the first down oh my there again is the danger of having a quarterback who can run the football, knows what to do. Nice job of keeping his balance on the left sidelines. You see here, the Ducks do a nice job. Man under coverage. Loose contain on the right side. And it's a good thing they got uh, Jasper to get tripped up here. In case like that, you'd like the defender to meet him with his shoulder pads. He tried to push him out of bounds and almost missed. Got him a little bit off balance, though. So Elam now will boot it away. He's got the wind at his back. Ronnie Harris, single safety at the Oregon 10. Elam, very, very high, and it looks like very effective punt. It drifts to the left sideline, and that'll be marked inside the 20, I believe. I was wrong by a yard. The 21. Well, Elam might be a little bit upset that the referee was not eyeballing that ball going out of bounds as soon as the ball hit he started walking and I'm not sure that's the correct snap or not but the job of that referee is to stay there and keep a visual point of where the ball goes out of bounds he did not do that O'Neill remains in at the quarterback spot for Oregon we'll set the, take a look at the offensive line as we uh, are going to have some changes Matt Martin now in at tackle along with Dan Mitchell Heath Howington at the center position after a good start, the Ducks are only two, three out of nine getting four yards or more on first down. The only offensive uh, line starter still in there is Mike DeFonzo. Burwell gets about five. He's got a kick out block from DeFonzo, number 65, and he cut it up behind him. Five or six yards after the 27 yard line. I think the Ducks would really like to establish a running game here. Uh, They've uh, O'Neill has been shaky throwing the football so now I think they'd like to go back to some basic running smash mouth kind of football and use that size in the offense. That's right. They're right aware the rain but the rainbows are a smaller team. Ducks should try to exert their physical dominance. Burwell gets another block and kind of just mashing it up there up around the 30 a little bit shy of the first down. And so it'll be third down and one and we're at that third down situation Ken where the Ducks need to convert. Ducks are one for five so far. Green and on the tackle. Gain of four, third down and one. So it's third down and one. In years past, this has been a down where the Ducks will go with two tight ends, but they are really depleted at that tight end position. And as a result, we'll go with a conventional lineup with the one tight end and the two wideouts. Hawaii stack in the middle of that defense. They'll give it to the fullback, Shedrick, and he just plows his way forward. Good effort. Addison finally bumps him down along with Lee, Lee, but not before the Ducks have a first down at the 35. Well, Shedrick has really got his game together since he missed that pass block. And uh, if he needed a wake-up call, maybe that was it. I'm sure Coach Campbell talked to him. But you got to be intense in there. Oh, that's Jones. I'm sorry. Well, when one running back gets yelled at, all of them here, so... That's Dwayne Jones, 34. Shedrick is 24. Screen. Jones didn't get the block in the corner, and Detweiler was able to hold on the football and gain about four. So again, the Ducks have gone with kind of a short passing game. Carlos Anderson, the left corner. It's a highly Salvador, the strong safety, made the stop. I think we'll see more of this, uh, Ken, is that Oregon go with more rhythmic passes quick pa uh, passes more like the San Francisco 49er offense Mike Bellotti went down there and uh, checked out their offense uh, like the rhythm passing his philosophy is now that 
they're just as good throwing the ball three or four yards and running it for 10 than trying to throw it for 14. You know, there's that short pass, but the problem is you got to catch the ball. Got to catch the ball. The one thing about the quick passing game, it takes pressure off your offensive line. It's a change up to the pass rushers. And in a case like Deadweiler, I mean, he's, a, he's not as big as Jerry Rice, but he looks like he's the same kind of threat. Get him the ball as soon as you can and let him run with it. Breaks one tackle. You know, you get one-on-one -on -one out there against a defensive back. If you break a tackle, it's all over. Frankly, Oregon didn't have that kind of threat last year. So another third down. Third and a long to five. Detweiler fall or right. Now they go with the two tight ends. Jones in motion. Dwayne Jones is the long back as O'Neal rolls. Penalty flag down the middle. Intended for Jones. He's got it. He's bumped down at the Hawaii 27, but we have a penalty flag back at the Oregon 33-yard line. Salvador and Addison converging on Anthony Jones, but they're gonna bring this baby back. Ducks had two people in motion at the same time. Deadweiler had not established Illegal his tip. position in a set position before Jones Illegal went in motion. Tip. Offense, five yards, now that's, previous spot. Now that's Deadweiler's fault for not being set. It's Jones's fault for not seeing it and slowing down so that they could be set. There were two men moving at the same time. The ball snapped. Illegal shift. And that's a big play. First, that's a huge play. It would have been the first time since the opening kickoff that the crowd would have been excited. It's a 33-yard penalty. At least. So five yards, and the Ducks will try to do it again. But this time, they need 10 yards. Screen back to Burwell. Just not quite enough burst. Good pursuit by Hawaii. That play looked like it would really bust. But coming back and making the, the stop for Hawaii was Andrew Tuaana, a senior from Honolulu. And instead of the Ducks having a big gain, they will be forced to punt it away. They come up a yard shy. Nice sequence of plays by the Oregon offense. So they, the wide receivers ran the same routes that they had run the previous play. Hawaii did a nice job of getting deep and covering them, leaving the screen open. Unfortunately, Burwell cannot break that last tackle. Watch the Ducks for, a, a, you know, they're not beyond running uh, fake kicks here. Thompson almost had it blocked. A low spiral bounces at the four and looks like one of your wedge shots, Ken. They'll mark that baby down at the four-yard line. <laughs> well, that did look like one of my wedges, except that it wasn't under a tree when it stopped rolling. <laughs> We've got a timeout on the field. 9.40 to play in the first half. Hawaii still leading the Oregon Ducks. Four stars. Where the day Welcome back to Watson Stadium. The Hawaii Rainbows uh, scoring on their first offensive possession. Uh, continue to lead. It's been a game dominated by, by Hawaii. Maybe more defensively than their offense. Uh, their defense, which uh, was porous to say the least last year. Great, a, by, great job today. Great job uh, by Thompson extending there. You notice that he punts with the shoe on. And when he tries PATs and field goals, he takes the shoe off. One, th one thing you're alluding to, your comment about the Oregon offense, I, you get the feeling, though, that it, it's just a matter of execution. They have people there. They're just missing by a yard or so. There's no, I mean, they're beginning to assert some kind of physical superiority at the line of scrimmage, both on offense and defense. A big play is in order here. Obviously, the Oregon defense would like to hold them, force the turnover, give the offense a chance to do the short field, at least get a chance to score before halftime. Tommy Thompson's having a good day punting the football. Three punts, 49.7 yard average. Jasper, it's outside of containment. Massey closes and pushes Jasper out of bounds at about the eight to gain a four. I'll give you a couple of injury updates for you. I know you're interested. Uh, Salida Malapai has a refractured right elbow as opposed to a refractured. In other words, he didn't fracture it again. So anyway, he may return, although he's not in there now. Brian Brown, uh, right knee, sprained ligaments out for the game. Steve Harden, ankle injury. They will evaluate him at halftime. The busiest guy at halftime is going to be the trainer. Power 
power play up the middle. Sims gets out to the 10 where he's pounded to the turf. Anthony Jones on the bottom of the stack there. As the Ducks trying to stiffen up defensively and take advantage of this field position. Watching the linebackers the last two plays, there's a, a little bit of intensity that I see out there. They're, they're starting to get after him a little bit. May have been embarrassed by that first period in which they were being blocked and run over. Crowd now getting into it. Gordon comes near side. Far side is Branch. Jasper straight back in the pocket. Over the middle, it is deflected and almost intercepted. Chad Coda with the deflection, and then David Massey almost was able to pick it off. Chad Coda, a heat-seeking missile in a football pads and helmet. He will put it on you. And the crowd giving the defense a big hand. If you're Ritz Brooks, this is the time to get a punt return. Elam to punt. Back in his own end zone. Ronnie Harris, the single safety for Oregon at his own 42. Elam, booming spiral that sends Harris back to the 35. And Harris is out of bounds, but he's in Hawaii territory. It's going to be a penalty on the Ducks. It looked like Walker may have caught a piece of the backside of the first defender down for the Rainbows. Oregon penalties have crippled their efforts this afternoon. They had an illegal procedure penalty that cost them 33 yards, and now a clipping penalty that'll cost them another 30 yards. Uh, that's a situation you'd like to have your your return man set that blocker up. He didn't really illegal give the blocker a the chance. On the kick return team, 10-yard penalty. That okay. is, that's a 10-yard penalty. That's a change in years past. They've changed the uh, blocking behind it from last year if you hit above the waist it's 10 below the waist the clipping is still 15 there you look at number seven Chad Coda and the Ducks are really high on him he's only a sophomore from Ashland High School but last year he really made his presence felt not only on opposing teams but on his own offense in practices he really will put the hit on you well the big hitters have got to though be looking for the loose ball too you can't be so attuned to killing the guy that you miss a chance for an interception so the Bucks into the wind here in the second quarter. Here comes the reverse to Dead right. Not much blocking out there when you have your quarterback blocking. And O'Neill was trying to put a block on, but uh, Hawaii defensively, they may not be big, but the one thing that uh, Hawaii has is some speed, and I think in that occasion, the Ducks were trying to take advantage of this pursuit and run that reverse, but uh, no gain. Maybe even a loss of a half a yard. Well, even though that play, play is no gain, that'll slow the defense down a little bit. Offense cannot allow a defense just to turn tail and run to the football. You've got to give them some other things to think about, keep them from overplaying certain things. Here comes the blitz. They run the draw. Good call. Good run by Burwell. Breaks a tackle. As he got away from Leakey, Leakey at about the 33. Fell forward, gain of seven. Third down at about three. Nice job by Burwell here. That, there's an example of setting up the middle linebacker, and he beats him one-on-one. -on -one. That's his ability. Ducks have done a real nice job with the, the, uh, the draw play. First, first quarter, they are out rushed 65 to 12. So they need to continue to let Burwell establish that running game. Burwell in motion. Quick pass out to Burwell, caught. First down. See, that's just as good as a six yard run. Just a little pass, you give him the ball and let him run with it. So a first down for the Ducks, they keep the drive alive. Seven minutes and 13 seconds remaining in the first half with Hawaii leading the Ducks seven to nothing. Well, Burwell is very versatile. He's an excellent pass receiver, and he's like Deadweiler. Get him the ball in the, the uh, open field. Let him make those people miss. Sean Burwell has caught a pass in every game in which he has played for the Ducks. First down. Play action pass. O'Neal over the middle intended for Deadweiler. Did he get it or did he drop it? Tremendous diving catch by Nedweiler. That's the same route that he dropped in the first period. O'Neal right on the money. 
Play action fake. They're going to have to honor that against Burwell. As you can see, that linebacker running out of there, leaving an open spot behind him. Deadweiler, great, great catch. And sometimes receivers make the difficult catch because they have to concentrate more. And that ball hitting them right in the chest, they kind of take their mind off of it. And that's what happened with Deadweiler in the first period. Certainly not in that instance. For the third time today, the Ducks in Hawaii territory. Screen pass to Anthony Jones. Boy, he just overpowered the left corner over there, Carlos Spud Anderson. And we have a little extracurricular activity on the sideline as well, but we didn't see that from Anthony Jones last year. Must have spent some time in the weight room. Ducks have shown that's a that's very much that's a companion play to the pass they threw to the uh, running back out there, and I really like what the offense is doing now here. These are high percentage completions for O'Neill. They're quick passes, not a lot of protection problem. They're getting the ball to a highly uh, competent uh, ball carrier, and they're getting some quickness uh, into the offense. And obviously it's frustrating the Rainbows. Is this the second time they've had a, a real late hit? Lou Randall, the rover back with the late hit on Jones there. So mark it down inside the 20 to the 17 yard line. Ducks right now are seven for 15, getting four yards or more on first down. the quick screen Deadweiler instead of blocking went downfield he was deep he was open O'Neill didn't have time to get the ball off but still had the presence of mind to make a positive play that was going to be a touchdown for the Ducks you look at Lee Lee -E. it's pretty obvious he's had uh, injury before to that right leg you see it all bandaged up and he is hobbling right now and he's going to have to sit down Victor Santa Cruz, a 5'11", 213-pound sophomore from Vista, California, will replace him. We've got a timeout on the field for an injury. When we come back, the Ducks will have it. Second and two inside the 10. Stadium for seven incredible home games and locals rule. Nice tempo with the offense right now. Be sure to catch women's college soccer Tuesday night at 10 as the Washington Huskies battle it out with the Oregon State Beavers only on Prime Sports Northwest. Time to come along with Ken Woody at Otson Stadium, second quarter, as we have 6.17 to play, and the Ducks with their best opportunity to score. Second down and two at the Hawaii eight-yard line. Wayne Jones has the first down. Probot the five-yard line. Wayne Jones is a powerfully built young man. Stands at six foot two, 220 pounds from La Puente, California. And if he gets his assignments and some of the mental parts down in this game, he's going to be a force for Oregon. Well, he's got running north and south down real well. Difficult for anybody to bring him down one-on-one. -on -one. Quick count. Burwell trips up over the 10-yard line and loses three. So we'll give that tackle to Omni Turf. They call it second and goal from the seven. This is the second year for this new turf. Remember last year, Ken, that in the first game, Washington State, a lot of sand and so forth. It takes about a year for that sand to, to settle into the turf, and the field is in perfect condition now. Burwell. 
Burwell smelling the end zone, but a good play coming up from that secondary, stopping Burwell short of the goal line by the Hawaii defense. Uh, Tanavasi from the nose tackle came over, and also Addison making a stop that might have uh, prevented uh, Burwell from scoring. Nice block by John Tattersall here, and I like this call. Get it in the hands of your money player down by the goal line. This was kind of a passing situation. You see Burwell gets it up the field. Wouldn't be surprised to see him take the ball again. On this down. Round this mark just inside the two. Around the goal line, you want the ball in the hands of your best player. Here comes the reverse to Netweiler, and he will score. Barely. Well, the last time we saw that play down at the goal line was four years ago at Autzen Stadium. 49 special when the Ducks fooled the Washington Huskies to win that ball game on a uh, play down near around the five yard line. And Derek Detweiler, you will hear a lot from this young man, gets his first touchdown as an Oregon Duck. Nice job by 31 Carlos Anderson of getting there. I thought Detweiler kind of let up a little bit, but it looked on the replay that he was running pretty hard. Anderson was the only player of Hawaii not fooled. Obviously, they're listening to me say that you should tackle Burwell. To tie the ball game, no good. Tommy Thompson, as Greg McCallum did a year ago, misses the first extra point of the season. It takes a little bit of wind out of the sails. Instead of it being tied, it's Hawaii still in the lead with four and a half to play. The following. Welcome back to Hudson Stadium, where the Ducks have just marched 70 yards in 10 plays, consuming 4.09 on the clock. Derek Detweiler, one yard on the touchdown run on a reverse, but the point after was no good. And so the Rainbows continue to lead. Point of concern, uh, Rich Brooks has said he's got a lot of confidence in Tommy Thompson. The guy's got a tremendous leg. Basically, was a place kicker in high school. Punting was kind of his, his second option. But when he came here, Greg McCallum, uh, one of the best in Oregon history, was already entrenched as the kicker. So Thompson, the punter the first two years, and now he's got to do it all. He's had a great day punting. He has had a rough start kicking the football. Missed a field goal, and now he's missed an extra point. Kickoff is high. And will be fielded by Branch at the five. And he is going to be nailed at the 10. Great coverage by the Ducks, who thought the ball had come loose. That was Dan Mead coming in late. He thought he saw the ball pop loose, but tremendous coverage by the Oregon Ducks on the kickoff. This is a classic one-on-one -on -one tackle by number 27 down on the left-hand side of your screen. Grady O'Connor, you watch this, he hits him high, wraps him up. Holds on till his pals get there. That's a great job of coverage by O'Connor. And once again, the Ducks have the advantage in the field position game. They've got Hawaii pinned back at the 11. Grady O'Connor, an outstanding hurdler, intermediate hurdler for the Duck track team. Ducks have got to be thinking turnover here. Jasper, plenty of time in the pocket. He's got a man, it's caught. Branch is up to the 25-yard line and a first down for Hawaii. Devon Hosey and Chad Cota made the stop. That's a gutty call by the, the Rainbows. They have not been very successful throwing the ball in first play deep in their own end. Come out throwing. Probably a, a tendency call. In well, other words, they don't throw much on first down. Let's uh, try to sure. loosen things up. And, and they got the Ducks in a zone that time. The other uh, previous situations have been against man and a pressure defense. Got a low in motion. That's for the throw. It across the middle, cut by Gordon, and he's immediately hurled to the turf after a gain of six. That's Gordon's first reception of the day. Joe Farwell and David Massey in there. That is the traditional run and shoot sprint out play. Bob Wagner, the Hawaii coach, was very much impressed by the originator of the run and shoot, Tiger Ellison, when he was a coach back in Ohio. Talk a little more later about what he's done with that offense in Hawaii.
fullback Sims he runs right past uh, the outside linebacker and gets another first down onto the 40 yard line Travis Sims having a good day running the football three year letterman one of the very few on the Hawaii team that has lettered in his first three seasons with the rainbows and he was recruited by the Ducks uh, they like this young man coming out of high school the right outside linebacker Ernest Jones was responsible for the dive he tried to play both and ended up nice read by the quarterback they don't take away that dive he's going to give it to him every time that's for the throw again protection is good now Jasper will run puts his head down and gets into Oregon territory at the 47 yard line Farwell and Herman O'Berry but uh, Jasper looking very good on this series making the right decisions well the Oregon defensive secondary coach and coordinator Denny Schuler would tell you nothing poses more problems than an option team that can throw the ball why just showing why on this drive under three minutes to play second quarter rainbows leading 7-6 counterplay with Sims and he gets maybe two Ducks uh, snuffed that one out pretty good. Getting back to the head coach of Hawaii, Bob Wagner. He, when he became the head coach at Hawaii, he wanted to have an offense that he remembered as a defensive coach of being the most difficult to defend. A great throwing option team poses really the most critical kind of uh, challenge that a defense can, uh, can hold up against. And he's established the running part of that. They'd really like to be a better passing team than they have been the last couple years. Jasper to roll out. Throws it near side. Caught. We got a flag over near where the ball was caught. Receiver may have been lined up on the line of scrimmage, making the outside guy ineligible. They don't throw the flag until the ball is thrown. Sai Hirota was the receiver who made the catch, and it's close to and probably would be a first down. Exactly right. The uh, got the two wide receivers out there, and all of a sudden one of those guys is ineligible. One of them has got to, normally that guy is the split end on the other side. Hawaii has flipped him to the other side of the formation. He's got to remember to get off the line of scrimmage. The, the official will not throw a flag until the ball is thrown because if it happens to be a running play, it's not a penalty. You see some of the... Receiver down the field on the offense. Five on the previous spot. You can see that Jeff Cummings is getting a, a lot of attention on the pass rush there. He, is, he really showed his stuff in the spring game when he intercepted that pass and went for a touchdown. He is a big guy who's a good athlete. There you see the, the uh, formation there, and you can see why the illegal procedure. Cummins also returned a touchdown in Oregon, uh, one of Oregon's fall scrimmages. In fact, the Oregon defense scored four times in one of the scrimmages. You've got that new rule that the defense can, can return fumbles. Oh, there's Sims, a gaping hole, and he may go the distance. No, finally Devon Hosey at the 25, but a great call, a tremendous execution by the Hawaii front five. The Ducks are caught in man coverage here, and you can see it's a little trap inside, the same kind of play Oregon State ran with good success in the Civil War. You just block a man inside and everyone else is run off. There's no secondary run support. Excellent call by the Rainbow coaching staff. They were fortunate to catch the Ducks in the wrong defense. Joe Farwell unable to make the tackle at the line of scrimmage. They'll just pound it inside with Sims again. He gets about two yards. Romeo Bandison uh, in there along with DJ Cabrera, the Oregon uh, defensive front, and Troy Bailey. So actually Oregon has gone to four down linemen in this set. Hawaii has three timeouts still left. They've got to be thinking that they'd like to get a touchdown, but at the very least, get a field goal and put the field goal as a non-factor in the Oregon offensive scheme. Jasper to roll out. They look for Branch in the corner. This ball is almost caught in and out of the arms of Branch. Hosey gambled and did not get the ball. Might have distracted Branch or maybe even gotten a finger on it. That's the second time today that Hosey has kind of misjudged the football. And he's got great speed, and uh, he should never really be in a position where he can't keep up with a guy he's trying to defend against. But a situation like that, a secondary coach would prefer that his man play the man. Don't guess on the route, and you've got to make a decision. Play the man or play the ball. If you play the ball, you better get it. Despite the fact the clock stopped on the incomplete pass, Hawaii has elected to use one of its timeouts with 43 seconds remaining. 
I have been extremely impressed with uh, Jasper, not only his elusivity, but when he's throwing the ball, he's been on the money. He hasn't thrown anything that's been a bad pass at all this afternoon. Well, yeah, the one, I should take that back, when he slipped and uh, Molden picked one off. But other than that, when he set, he looks really good. Well, he may be the superior of the two quarterbacks as a passer. Coach Wagner told me before the game that ideal. he said one thing that they're quite proud of. Last year, their, their quarterback uh, rushed for over 1,000 yards. They're very proud of that. But he said, don't forget, he threw for over 1,000. Frankly, uh, when we assess our offense, we are know that we have a good offense to where we want it to be when the quarterback is rushing for 1,000 yards and throwing for 2,000. That's the goal they'd like to see. Well, the University of Arizona has tried or did try to install this uh, offense, but they could never quite get the trigger puller to uh, work that thing to its perfection. They were always good at running the football. They led the conference in rushing every year, but they couldn't throw the ball well enough to keep the defenses off balance. Well, the other thing, Hawaii's real fortunate is they have two physical quarterbacks with their offense. And the thing is, in the WAC conference, taking nothing away from them, they don't play the kind of physical defense that the SCs, Washingtons, UCLA's play. And I think that worked a little bit against Arizona uh, in, in that offense as well. The Rainbows, one for five on third down conversions. Jasper, quarterback draw. He's going to make it. Good call as they suck the Oregon defense in. And then Jasper, with his abilities, just uh, saw the opening and was able to run to it. Timeout Hawaii, 34 seconds remaining. And now they have four more downs at their disposal. This is what happens when you have an athlete who's playing quarterback. Watch how he protects the football when he gets, he knows he's gonna be hit here. There's just so much advantage to having a quarterback who can run and knows what to do with the football. Well, at halftime, we'll get you caught up with all the statistics. And analyze the first half and uh, look ahead to the second half and what has been a low scoring defensive game a little surprising i think a lot of the folks have thought that this would be a high scoring affair simply because hawaii with that great reputation to move the football score a lot of points and i think most people felt that the oregon now that it had o'neill and burwell back in the uh, camp and Derek detweiler uh, into the offense that uh, they'd be able to move the ball and score some points but it's really been the defenses that have uh, done very, very well, especially on third downs. The only thing that Oregon has not done in the, the second quarter is to take advantage of field position. You watch the schedule here. Well, next week we'll be down at uh, the farm to watch the Ducks take on Bill Walsh and the Stanford Cardinal, followed by a turn back here for three straight. Texas Tech, UNLV, and Arizona State before uh, moving to Southern California. First and 10 for the Rainbows at the 13. Jasper to throw. Deep drop this time over the middle. He's got a man, but it's incomplete. Overthrown. Pressure by Ernest Jones as he knocked Jasper to the turf as he released the football. Uh, good job by the quarterback. Receiver was not open, so he threw the ball high. It's going to be out of bounds. No chance of a turnover. Good quarterback's got to know when to fold it. Kind of the Kenny Rogers philosophy. Got to know when to hold it. Know when to fold it. Don't get caught with it in your hand when you're trying to fold it. <laughs> Second down, 28 seconds remaining in the half. This time the rollout, Cummins in pursuit. Jasper will throw it up and it is incomplete again, intended for Branch, and he had a step on Hosey. Well, and again, Hosey gets caught looking in at the quarterback and loses track of the receiver. Fortunately for him, the ball was thrown high and out of bounds. So now it'll be third down, clock stop, 22 seconds. Rainbows clinging to a one-point lead here near the end of the first half. Real important for the Ducks to at least force the field goal here. Can't let the Rainbows in the end zone. Drop play to Sims. Trying to get a little bit better positioning, but he ended up running right on the stripe anyway. So what this does is, although it makes it a shorter field goal, makes it a little more difficult angle for the Rainbows. So it's fourth down, and the Rainbows will let the clock wind down to five, four, three, and now two. They may put one more second on the board, but they wanted to ensure that this would be the final play of the half. So Hawaii takes the timeout. That is their third and final timeout. So they did just what they wanted to do, Ken, with that offensive drive. They started deep in their own territory. Good mix of pass and run. Big draw play run by Sims. 
And now they've got an opportunity to tack three more points on the board. Jason Elam, an outstanding kicker for Hawaii. Preseason first team All-American by just about every magazine you'd want to look at from uh, Snellville, Georgia. You can see right there, they don't let Jason get in the huddle with the rest of the guys. They just want him to be worried about the only thing he has to do, and that's kick the ball. Well, the one thing Jason would probably have preferred is that the uh, running back running the draw there might have taken a right turn and tried to get the ball yeah. more in the middle. With these goalposts narrowed as they have been, that's, a, that's one of the most difficult angles you can get for a kick. They were all difficult for you, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, they were. Oh, you did a good job. Well, thank goodness uh, some of the people remember the good ones. And, if, you know, as we all get older, we tend to forget the, the ones where you're once booed by 34,000 people <laughs> here at Autzen Stadium. Well, the older we all get, the better we used to be. Well, you know, one of the tough things, though, is that one time Coach Fry asked the team, should we go for the field goal or punt? And the team they said, let's it? punt. <laughs> so Santiago will uh, place it down at the 16-yard line, a 26-yard attempt. Good snap, good placement. That's a good kick. So the difference in this football game right now is Jason Elam. He's got a field goal and an extra point, and Hawaii leads the Ducks by four. It's 10 to six, and that concludes the first half of play as both teams head to the locker room. We'll be back to Watson Stadium with our halftime activities after this timeout. Green Ice Lager Draft. Extra fuel injector cleaner is available at Action Auto Parts. Welcome back to Autzen Stadium. We are at halftime where the Hawaii Rainbows lead the Oregon Ducks 10 to 6. Uh, Ken, the Hawaii scored on its first offensive possession and its last offensive possession. The Ducks finally got on the board in the second quarter. So I guess you'd have to say the defenses have uh, actually done what they wanted to do so far. Pretty much so. I really like what the uh, Hawaii offense is doing to the Ducks. They're pecking, running the option, doing a pretty good job with their passing game. Uh, right now, the Ducks have got to clamp down on first down. They've got to limit uh, Hawaii and keep them in long yardage situations. Well, we'll come back and show you some highlights and have the halftime statistics. But first, this time up. Well, both teams have uh, concluded their halftime talks and beginning to come back out on the football field. Hawaii leading the Ducks at halftime 10 to 6. Uh, Ken, do you take a look at uh, how the game has progressed and uh, Hawaii offensively has been able to do a lot of things. They've rushed the football very well and they've also come up with the big play throwing the football as well. So I think they've got to be fairly pleased with their offense. Uh, they've done just about what they wanted to do. First pass they tried to throw. They caught Oregon in man-to-man -man coverage and it's a 49-yard touchdown as we see the statistics here. See the rushing yardage for Hawaii, 157 yards. The Ducks only 49 on 21 attempts, so total yards. Hawaii with the advantage. Now the turnovers played a big key because the second turnover for Hawaii, a fumble in the end zone that resulted in a touchback, uh, that really cost them an opportunity at that point maybe to go ahead 14 to nothing. Very fortunate for the Ducks that uh, they weren't going to be blown out early there. Nice job by the defense. Well, Hawaii scored on its first offensive possession as they marched 83 yards, culminated on this 49-yard touchdown pass from Ivan Jasper to Derek Branch. And it looked like Hosey misplayed the ball. Certainly has the speed to keep up with Branch, but Branch did a nice job of getting body position out fighting him for the football. See, he gets his feet right down in the end zone. Excellent throw and a superb catch by Branch in the corner of the end zone. Then it was kind of back and forth defensively. Neither team unable to sustain a drive. And the, Fux, the uh, Ducks finally got on the board late in the second half when they uh, got the touchdown run on a reverse by Derek Deadweiler. Well, the Ducks did a nice job of mixing it up. They're getting it to Deadweiler. They're getting it to Burwell. O'Neill's doing a nice job throwing the football. It was an excellent job. Uh, trick play. Last time we saw that, it beat the Huskies. Well, they may use it again if that's what it takes to get in the end zone, but the missed extra point followed by a field goal and Hawaii with the lead. You see the reverse right here to Derek Deadweiler, and at this point I said touchdown. I thought he had it made, and he just did uh, squeeze in the corner of the end zone, beating uh, the cornerback on the play. So here we are at halftime. It's 10-6 Hawaii. The second half is ready to begin, and we'll be back with the second half kickoff in just a moment. Kid 
ready to do the wave like you've never done it before. Because turf's up in Anson Stadium for seven incredible home games. And locals rule. And the second half is underway. The kickoff by Elam will bounce out of bounds. So that'll be a five-yard penalty if uh, the Ducks are so inclined. So we got the penalty flag. Derek Deadweiler right there returned the only other kickoff by Hawaii today. Well, the Ducks can choose to get this ball at the 35-yard line. Should be good field position to start the second half. I think you can do better than that when uh, the guy is kicking into the wind. And uh, you need a big play to get things going. Don't, uh, don't you think that uh, they... Sure, any chance that I could get to get Deadweiler the ball in the open field and the kickoff return is just one of those kind of plays. I'd do it. And that's what Coach Brooks has elected to do. To get big plays, you've got to try to get them. So, you know, make them kick the football off. And Ducks and traditionally have been a good return team. Last year, as we mentioned, was an exception. Uh, whether we were blocking or emphasis or personnel, uh, could be any one or all three of those factors. What about the uh, decision here, Ken, by Hawaii to kick into the win in the third quarter to have the wind at their backs in the fourth quarter? This is what you do when you're kind of an underdog on the road. They want to they want to play so that in the in the fourth quarter, if they can keep the Ducks even in the third, they'll have the advantage. Field position. Uh, right now, I guess you'd have to say, hey, we've got the superior kicking game just because they've made the kicks and the Ducks have missed theirs. Real important for Oregon to use the wind and make uh, uh, advantage of it while they got it. Elam's kick now is a little bit shorter. Detweiler fields at the 13. There's your big play. Oh, a big hit by Addison as he puts the old shoulder pads to Detweiler. So the Ducks do manage to pick up an additional three yards that uh, they would not have gotten if they had elected to take the ball at the 35. And Detweiler also gets a big pop to boot. At the top of the game, we talked about the keys. Hawaii's got to outrush the Ducks. So far, they are 157 yards to 49. Have they rattled the offense? They a little bit. Defense, Oregon, have they made Hawaii pass? No, they've not been able to stop the run. Finding a leader, O'Neill and Burwell have been playing pretty well. We'll see if they can sustain that and add to it in the second half. Toss sweep, short side of the field. Burwell manages to get maybe two yards out close to the 40-yard line. Burwell in the first half. 12 attempts, 50 yards, his longest only nine. And Danny O'Neill was nine for 17 for 98 yards, but he was sacked three times, Ken, and that's about what the average was per game last year. Well, more damaging was the fumble that he had. Well, should have, he should have been taking the sack. Got the ball. Ducks were nine for 16 on first down success, five for 10 on third down. O'Neill to throw. Excellent protection. The ball is out. Intended and intercepted. Intended for Jones, but it's intercepted by Hawaii. And the Rainbows again with the turnover. That is Carlos Anderson with the pick. And great field position for Hawaii. The ball overthrown by O'Neill. Well, O'Neill steps back. He's got good protection. And he just looks like he short arms the ball a little bit. It takes off. It's over the head of the receiver. And I tell you what, Anthony Jones saw Addison there to put on the hit. Good way of lo losing a receiver as well as turning the football over. A lot of pressure on the Oregon defense now. Let's see if they've made any adjustments handling this uh, dangerous Hawaii offense. Jasper could be audibleizing. So he stays at quarterback. Here come the option. Pitch it out. This is the other uh, quarterback, Carter. And he is uh, run down by a trio of Oregon defenders, Paul Rodriguez, David Massey, and Jeff Cummins. And we have a flag in the Oregon secondary. Excellent job by Massey of running the quarterback down from the inside. We saw that they were not successful on that in the uh, first half. But you know, an option offense puts a lot of pressure on your inside uh, people who would prefer just to play tackle to tackle. In this case, linebackers got to get outside and cover the quarterback. Personal foul, late hit on the offense, 15 yards. The second That's down. A Fourth situation, Hawaii has had a late hit or a hit downfield not even close to the football that's hurt them. And the man involved, I believe, was Derek Branch, and he immediately came to the sideline and went down to one knee. 
don't think he's been disqualified, but he has been taken out of the football game for right now. So it'll be second and 22. Gordon split far to the top of the screen. They go to that trip set to the right. Jasper to throw. Trying to come back near side and overthrows his intended receiver, Marlo Lewis. Lewis lined up in the short slot there, and Hawaii is mixing it up. When he's on the line of scrimmage, he's ineligible and predominantly blocking on the option. He was off the line of scrimmage there, in which case, he's an eligible receiver. The Oregon secondary's really gotta be aware of that. They're trying to sneak him across the field. Like I said before, Hawaii, Hawaii's offense puts a lot of pressure on the perimeter people. Third and 22. Jasper to throw, Cummins on the pursuit. Throws it up, for grabs, and incomplete. I don't know if Paul Rodriguez would have been able to keep one foot inbound and get the interception or not, but it's a new point because Hawaii now is going to have to punt the football away. So big defensive stand, and as you mentioned, Ken, that was really important because Hawaii could have extended its lead rather easily if they had just maintained their field position there. David Massey did a, a very nice job on the outside there, containing the quarterback, forcing him to commit himself, keeping contained. Nice job, Oregon defense. Jason Elam, who averaged almost 45 yards in attempt on three punts in the first half, will boot it from inside his own territory. The punt is very, very, very high. Ronnie Harris calling for the fair catch. Ball is the ball and pumps on it at the 11 yard line. Ooh, that'll put the old heart in the throat. Harris is fortunate that there's a two yard buffer zone between him and the coverage people because he was able to recover and recover the ball before number 23. That's good job of coverage and Harris does a nice job of shielding the ball. Lucky break there. Indeed. So after a 38 yard punt by Elam pinning the Ducks inside their 20. Ducks now with the wind at their back, although in all honesty, it's a, a little bit of a crosswind as well. And as we mentioned at the start of the game, about 15 miles an hour. And it has had a little bit of an effect today. I think O'Neill has been bothered a little bit by the wind, especially when he's thrown to his left, going from this end of the field, kind of into that wind. Last year, the Hawaii gave up 185 yards a game rushing. So far in the first half, only 49 against a Pac-10 opponent. This has got to be, I know, we talked about it at halftime. This is a point of concern. Ducks are just going to have to dig down and do something about it. They can, can, they've got to establish a running game. Let's check out the offensive line. Steve Harden uh, injured in the first half for the Ducks. We uh, have not had a report as to whether or not he will play. They said they were going to reevaluate at the halftime. Kerr in the center. Defonso and Tattersall the guards. Justin Stark, a JC transfer. And it, David Collins were thought the tackles. It's very remained the tight end. Here's the drop play to Burwell, kind of weaving his way. Ball is loose. Is it down or is it recovered? It's Hawaii's football. The Rainbows with their second consecutive turnover. And Louis Randall pounced on the football, and the Rainbows now have it at the Oregon 12. Some Oregon fans may be disputing this as a late call, but that's one of the problems you have with a running back who is so hard to get down. Is he stopped or not? Keeps his feet going. And he's carrying the ball like a loaf of bread. Yeah, he was trying to switch the ball to the outside arm and keep it away from the defender and just never had control of it. Go to the fullback, Sims. He Pounds the belly of the Oregon defense for four down to the eight-yard line. At the bottom of the stack, Gary Williams, the nose tackle, made the stop, along with Joe Farwell, the inside of linebacker. Uh, this is just a real good job by the Hawaii defense of getting their hands in against a struggling running back and knocking the ball out of there. Oregon defense has got to think field goal attempt here. They cannot give up a touchdown. Second down and six. Side of the belly man, that's Sims, and he's powering down to the two-yard line. And that will be close to a first down for the Rainbows. Now they're bringing the big hosses off the bench. In fact, one of the additional blockers is the nose tackle, Tanavasu, who's into the ball game. Well, Hawaii has done just about everything they wanted to do. They immediately took the crowd out of the game with the touchdown on the first series. They've controlled the ball on the ground, eaten up valuable time on the clock. Their defense has 
forced Oregon to make uh, mistakes. Two turnovers here already in the first two minutes and 15 seconds of the second half. And now they've got a first and goal at the two. Double tight end in the power eye formation. Here for the second man, it's the tailback Carter. And he scores. He had 16 touchdowns a year ago, and he gets his first touchdown of this season. The Rainbows capitalize on the turnover and extend their lead to 16 to 6. Traditionally, one of the weaknesses of a double slot formation is goal line offense. And as you can see, Hawaii has the capability of getting into a two tight end power oriented formation. They'll just get their best players on the field and see what they can do. Right now, Hawaii doesn't have enough men on the field on the left side. But it makes no difference. Even the boots are through. And the Rainbows, with 12.35 to play in the third quarter, have extended their lead to 11 points. sun-drenched crowd here at Otson Stadium uh, not having much to cheer about so far but we got a long way to go third period 12.35 to play it's uh, been all Hawaii As they uh, made the late trip into Eugene last night arrived at about 10.30 last night had their pregame meal this morning at 6 o'clock their time but they've been the ones that got the wake-up call the Ducks uh, still trying to feel themselves along here Deadweiler will bring it back over their second, make that third offensive possession of the half. 20-yard return by Derek Deadweiler. The Ducks with an interception on the first offensive possession. The second one, a fumble, resulting in a touchdown. And now find themselves down by 11 points. New tailback in the game, Ricky Whittle, number 14. Well, the one thing about the Ducks, they're down by 11 right now, but they're facing a team that now clearly feels they have a chance to win. Jones, a little timing pattern. Jones to the 30, and rubbed out of bounds by Anderson at the 33-yard line. A good pass to call. It's a quick one, a short one, a safe one. Gives a chance a quarterback to get a little bit of momentum. O'Neill finished the second, ha the first half, uh, pretty good after a rocky start. I think he's the kind of guy you have to get him in a rhythm by the plays you call. He doesn't seem to be able to get himself in a rhythm. You know, adjusting any kind of route. I think the short ones then build up to the deeper routes. And the Ducks have got some kids who can make a catch and turn a short short gain into a long one. Scrambling, looking for a block out there. And that's a nice one by Ricky Whittle. He enables O'Neill to get the first down and out of bounds at the 38 yard line. Well, the, Ducks, the Ducks need to find a way to get the crowd back into the game to generate some enthusiasm so that they can build on that. It's tough to do it by yourself. It's almost like playing a road game. Well, here's an example. O'Neill says, hey, I got short yardage for the first down. No one's there. I'm going to get the ball, get the ball under yeah, right there. He's protecting it a little better than last time. But I, I think O'Neill finds it is very difficult to have to concentrate every single play. Remember, he's only started five games. Gets out to the 47, but a penalty flag. And boy, has that been the bugaboo for the Ducks this afternoon. Bring it back in a holding call. The Ducks have had critical penalties at inopportune times. And now, just when they start to build a little momentum, somebody's grabbing the jersey. Well, that's the first holding penalty they had. In the first half, they had an illegal procedure, a lineup thing that took away a big gain. That'll be the fourth penalty. Holding. On the offense, 10-yard penalty. penalty, repeat first down. Well, you know, it's a tough day when your penalties are coming on big plays for you. So you really, you know, you don't make the defense say, well, we'll decline it. If the, if the quarterback had been, you know, no gain there, they might have declined it be second and 10 instead of first and 20. The Ducks have a string of eight consecutive victories on opening day. Their last defeat on opening day came back in 1983 when the uh, University of Pacific beat them. Yeah, here we go again. It's Ferry. A little bit of a premature movement. 
Well, that's a picky call there because no, he didn't really draw any Hawaii guy offside. Dead ball, Dead ball. false start, start. offense. Off Tight Five ends get a little bit of leeway in, in their yeah. movement. They can put their hand down, lift it up, shift, and so on. In that case, he did flinch a little bit, but it didn't appear that he drew any Hawaii player offsides. Back to back penalties. So it'll be first and 25 back at the 23 yard line. I'd, I'd really uh, question that call. Trap inside to Shedrick. He'll get back to five yards lost on the penalty. Take it out to the 29 yard line where Victor Santa Cruz is playing in place of Mita Lee. Lee injured his leg in the first half, made the stop. Today's attendance, 32,560 for the Ducks, who uh, for the last five years have set some kind of an attendance record, either total attendance or average attendance per game. Of course, school is not in session, so the student's not here yet. And it's also the Labor Day weekend. O'Neill over the middle intended for Harris. Did he catch it and hold on? Boy, he did. That's a heck of a play by Ronnie Harris. And that's the kind of a play they've been looking for out of Harris. That is uh, about a yard shy of the first down. Zach Odom made the stop and appealed, saying that uh, he had knocked the ball loose. You see O'Neill set his feet and threw that. He threw that ball with some authority there, not like the kind of hope and pray uh, technique he had on the interception. I think, you know, when the, guy, when the kid is decisive, he makes good plays. When he's kind of wondering what he should do, bad things happen. Still young. This is only his sixth career start. So a big third down play. Ricky Whittle busts it up in there. Coming up from the secondary is uh, Addison to make a hit, but uh, not before Ricky Whittle gets three yards and a first down. There's an Oregon first down. So it's an Oregon first down, and boy, when you were just faced with first and 25 and uh, struggling offensively to pick up that uh, first down on a third down conversion, uh, can only help. Terrific job, and I, you know, the one thing that was different on those three plays, everyone was really intense and concentrating. There's no pussyfooting around. inside Hawaii territory after a gain of about three. Ricky Whittle is an explosive back, 5'9", 180 pounder, red shirt freshman from Fresno, California. Went to Edison High School in the Fresno area. And as a senior, rushed for over 1,300 yards and 23 touchdowns. Well, he reminds me a lot of uh, Donnie Reynolds, who played here in the, the 70s. It's so long ago, I can't remember exactly <laughs> when, but he was a, a great athlete, a, a, a little guy. Great balance, good quickness. Definitely an asset to the duck running attack this year. Ronnie Reynolds, of course, the uh, brother of Harold Reynolds, the uh, second baseman of the Mariners. Backside screen. Burwell. Out of bounds at the Hawaii 31-yard line. Addison and Anderson shoved him out. But Burwell on the uh, screen play. Able to pick up a big chunk of yardage for the Ducks. 18 yards and a first down. Nice job by O'Neill of getting the ball off quickly. And here's a sight you like. Hey, tuck that ball away. You know, when Bobby Moore, Ahmad Rashad, played here as tailback in uh, 1968, he had a real fumble problem because he'd hold the ball away from his body. And you don't see those guys coming from the blind side or behind you. Play to Dwayne Jones. Not much there. Ball comes loose. Hawaii recovers. Third turnover of the quarter for the Ducks. Now and th the Boo Birds come out. Well, John, if John Madden were here, he'd say the ground can't cause a fumble. It looked like Jones was down. You make the, pl the call here. But Jones is going to slide outside to the left. And the ball just comes out as he hits the ground. Hard to tell from that angle to really see when it came loose, but uh, the official on that side in a pretty good position to see it. And the Ducks uh, becoming their own worst enemy here, turning it over three times. That's four for the game. A year ago, the Ducks were minus eight in the turnover margin, and they have started this season not holding on to the football. Inside it goes to the big guy. No, it's the hand uh, Jasper keeps it, and he's going to hold on to the ball, and he's going to drag Oregon tacklers for about. 18 yards and now the crowd is really restless Jasper big gain 21 yards and another first down this is 
A great advantage you have. You see that the uh, Oregon defense, number 43 there, Coker should have had the quarterback. He anticipated the pitch and allowed Jasper to turn inside. Oh my God, and Jasper has fallen to the turf. He was headed towards the sidelines and he, he fell. Might be a cramp. Looks like he's holding the back of his leg. And Hawaii will have to take a timeout here probably. Boy, what a day for Jasper. He's got 91 yards already. 21 carries. For a team not used to playing the option, having one, well, of course, Oregon's had more than one week to prepare for this because it's their opener. But you really require some discipline on your linebackers and defensive ends when you play an option. And you see an example in that last play, Coker is responsible for the quarterback. He left him at the last second anticipating the pitch. A good option quarterback can see that, cuts it back inside, and there's not gonna be anybody there because everyone else is running to their responsibility. You watch Cork, uh, Coker at the top of your screen. Come down to, you've gotta make him pitch. And that's a nice fake by the quarterback. Look at the ankle there as he's trying to make his cut. Someone's gonna. Vanderson from behind uh, might have turned it a little bit. So back at quarterback will be Michael Carter. And he will automatize. So the nice thing for Hawaii is they come in with a guy who played all of last year at quarterback, so they don't lose anything in experience. Here he comes in the option pitch, and this time Farwell wraps him up after a gain of one. Oregon secondary is in kind of a two-deep coverage, and I'd be, I wouldn't be surprised to see him try to bring the option to the wide side of the field in that case, because to run it too deep, you've got to move an outside linebacker out. Second and eight for Hawaii, 8-14 on a running clock here, third quarter. The Rainbows leading at 17-6. They have led all the way, scoring on their first offensive possession and capitalizing also on a couple of Oregon turnovers here in the second half. Carter, a little swing pass that comes out the branch. Branch has a first down or close to it at the Oregon 38-yard line. Chad Coda and Herman O'Berry shove him out of bounds. Well, you can get really frustrated trying to defend an option like or an offense like this. In that case, Oregon tried to bring some pressure Hawaii simply flipped the ball outside quickly. And you know, th there's a, a, a real perimeter uh, element to this offense here. And it's difficult to get pressure on them because they can get it outside so quickly, either on a quick pass, which is part of that uh, run and shoot philosophy, or in the option. Hand off. Pitched out of bounds. It'll be a loss of about one. Trying to run that option to the uh, short side of the field. He had given it to the fullback. Uh, it looked like Sims had had a pretty good lane to run there. I don't know if Cummins, uh, who's going off the field right now, looks like he's holding his uh, right shoulder. But I, if he was responsible for the dive man, he was totally mesmerized. He didn't know who to take. The dive man went by him, and the quarterback went by him. He got nobody. The Ducks without two defensive starters here for the second half. Uh, Salida Malapai injured in the first series. John Tomo Piao also injured an ankle in the first quarter, and they are not expected back. Carter now has all kind of room to run. Breaks one tackle and is a little bit shy of the first down. Again, Tony, I should say, uh, Chad Cota up from that free safety spot making the stop. The Ducks playing without the services of their All-American free safety, Eric Castle. Came down with a case of mononucleosis three days prior to the start of uh, fall training camp. He has progressed uh, very well. Uh, the blood count is now good. The uh, spleen is still, we understand, uh, a little too uh, big for him to return to any activity, but th they expect him back maybe in another three weeks or so. Third and one. Carter, pitch, perfect timing. And it's a first down, and we have another penalty flag in the Oregon secondary. The pitch went to Eddie Kialoha. But boy, that's what you talk about, running the offense to perfection. They might be calling a Hawaii receiver downfield holding, in which case that would be a really mental mistake for Hawaii. They had the first down. The block was going to be... It's on number 15, I believe, Brian Gordon. And that's really a foolish, foolish penalty. Holding. Holding. Offense. offense. 
Replay third Replay down. Third down. Well, we'd like to remind you this Wednesday, the Lady Portland Pilots head to Pullman to take on the Cougars in soccer. Catch the action Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Pacific time here on Prime Sports Northwest. So we'll replay the down there, and it's still going to be third and inches. And they're going to throw for it. Pass is going to be overthrown. Interesting call on third and short. Maybe the Rainbows feel uh, we can just go ahead and get it on fourth and short. Well, Coach Wagner's out there showing the quarterback how much they had to get for the first down, and I don't think they're pleased with him throwing the football at all. Yeah, because it did look like he audibleized, didn't it? Yes. Mike Carter has done a nice job running the offense, but he messed that one up. He's putting the Oregon defense in an opportunity of making a big play. So now it's fourth down in inches. Quarterback sneak and Carter gets three yards on a quarterback sneak and he has the first down. You know, we've talked about the uh, perimeter pressure that the Hawaii offense has. This is all made possible because their center, Lenny Amosa, is able to single block the nose guard, requiring that, uh, you know, that the linebacker have to kind of hang and watch that inside uh, uh, running lane. Really what the Ducks would like to do is be able to dominate the center and make them have to double team somebody and leave a linebacker free to help out on the running game. Carter. Rodriguez from behind, but another first down. And the Hawaii Rainbows are going through the Oregon defense like a hot knife through butter right now. They got first and goal at the eight. Chad Cota, number seven, had the quarterback on this particular situation, and he was blocked by one of the lead backs, number 38, Eddie. Keoloa. Well, now the rainbow is looking for a chance to widen the margin here. As they have it first and goal at the eight, under six minutes to play in the quarter. Carter again. Carter to the four. Ball comes loose, but after the whistle had blown. That doesn't look like any less of a fumble than the last two the Ducks have had. And most of the fans here uh, kind of hold the same kind of opinion of it so it's a gain of four second down and goal from the four keep in mind a field goal by Hawaii would give them only a 14 point cushion a touchdown and the Ducks would have to score three times Side, the quarterback kept it and he gets about two. So it'll be third down. Jones and Romeo Bandison in there converging for the Oregon defense. And again, the big guys come off the bench for Hawaii as they bring in uh, some more beef to try to pound it out. Bob Wagner doesn't like the situation on the sidelines. He indicates and gets a timeout. So 439 remaining third wow. quarter. The Hawaii Rainbow Hawaii. knocking on the door wow. once again. Leading it 17 to 6. Of the 10 best sell. So it's third down and goal from the three. Carter back to throw over the middle. All alone behind the secondary is Eddie Kialoha as he got behind the linebackers for the touchdown. Well, the Rainbows are showing they can pose a lot of different kinds of threats when they're on offense, and that's something the Ducks have not been able to do today. And the Rainbows capitalize once again on a turnover and march down the field and have extended their lead. Elam trying to make it 24 to 6. And it's up and good, and the all-time Hawaii scorer Boots through another point. And now the Ducks are in a world of hurt. They trail 24 to 6 with four and a half to play. Beautiful call, tremendous execution on the touchdown pass. Well, you, 
there you see uh, the scoring drive, 11 plays, and uh, 69 yards, four and a half minutes, a two-yard pass from Carter to Kealoa for the third touchdown by the Rainbows, and uh, this one set up by a fumble by the Oregon Ducks while the Ducks were on the move offensively. So Deadweiler is getting a lot of work returning kickoffs. To the 26-yard line. 20-yard return. Well, considering the way this game has gone, Ken, I would have to say that this offensive possession by Oregon is critical. They uh, have not shown a propensity to maintain scoring drives as Hawaii just did moments ago. They they move the ball for 30 or 40 yards and then a big mistake, a fumble, a penalty or whatever. They need some continuity. And with uh, four and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter, this team uh, needs to move the ball and get some points. Four wide receivers in the ball game. The next look to open things up offensively. Neal, short drop back over the middle. He's got Deadweiler. Finds a seam in the defense. Deadweiler into Hawaii territory at the 47. Dragged down once again by Brian Addison, who's been a man all over the field this afternoon for the Rainbow. Excuse me, that was uh, Corey Murphy, I think. No, it was Deadweiler. Deadweiler, excuse me. Murphy just got all excited, and I thought that for a moment he had caught it. The Deadweiler. And there's what we were talking about, Ken, the short pass and let him run with the thing. Quick, decisive throw by O'Neill. He's throwing it off the linebacker there. His last two completions have been that kind of thing. You no, know, the Ducks have just got to get the job done. Matter of execution. Although as Tex Winters once said, we'll talk about execution earlier next week. Juan Shedrick pounds the middle. Spread the defense, then hit the middle. Gain of five. Gain of five. Yeah, the word execution means a lot of different things right now at this stage of the game. There is still plenty of time in the football game. They've got more than a quarter to play. The Ducks need to score offensively, and then the defense needs to make something happen, too. But you got to keep in mind that Hawaii does have a propensity of turning the ball over, too. So we don't feel that they've got this one uh, put uh, away just yet. Again, three-step drop, O'Neal, scramble. Decision. Shedrick gets up field, head down, first down at the 35. Tanabasa, the nose tackle, making the stop for Hawaii. Now, Corey Murphy did a nice job there of not trying to make a block that would have been a potential clip. You know, I'll tell you, for offenses to work, you got to have people executing and thinking out there. That was just a little thing, but did a nice job of deciding not to try to throw a block. Been a shame to nullify that first down. And a good decision from a young man that playing his first game for the Ducks, a redshirt freshman. Ned Weiler in motion. He the happy feet, dances out of trouble, and picks up about four more yards to the 31. Victor Santa Cruz and Lou Randall, the inside backers, converge on O'Neill. It looked like he was being a, was much more aware of trying to protect the football when he's running now. Oregon nemesis offensively today, turnovers. Three of them here in the third quarter. Here comes the blitz. O'Neal steps up, goes deep down over the middle, and we have a couple of players getting tangled up downfield. Uh, ruled inadvertent contact. Lou Randall for Hawaii and Anthony Jones for the Ducks. Well, that's a pretty good job by, by the linebacker. If uh, you can't stop him, get your feet tangled up. Ducks have gone to a four wide receiver look here. Trying to move the ball down the field in a hurry. And that situation, a linebacker was trying to cover wide receiver and just got his feet tangled up. The weak side blitz inside to Harris, the fastest of the Oregon receivers, and Ronnie Harris has a first down at the Hawaii 19-yard line. Addison once again making the hit. He's probably got about 10 tackles this afternoon. Good job by Harris getting up the field after the catch. You watch this. Quick little move. Protect the football. I think that was Tom Curran down there, the center, making a nice block. Ducks have done a nice job with that quick little screen pass, and that's a difficult thing to blitz against because if that receiver can break one tackle, he's going to go all the way. 
little confusion by the Ducks. Incomplete. Intended, I believe, for Christian McNamore. And either O'Neill thought he was going to continue to run or McLemore thought it was a pitch pattern. But the, the communication wasn't there. McLemore making his first appearance for the Ducks as a flanker as Detweiler went out of the ball game. So the Ducks really inexperienced at the receiver positions. Jones and Harris are seniors, but Corey Murphy and Christian McLemore are both redshirt freshmen who have the coaching staff very high on both of them, but the, the inexperience factor definitely playing here. The out pass. It is caught at the nine-yard line. Good scoop catch by McLemore. McLemore atones for the previous play when you know, he's the primary receiver, and he's not sure what to do. That's that's kind of a bad situation, but he makes a great catch here as he goes down and scoops up the ball. Excellent catch. Gets the first down. A minute 42 to go third quarter. If the Ducks punch one in here at the uh, end of three, maybe they're only 10 back. The inexperienced receiver there might try to just bend at the waist and catch it and run with it. In that case, he had the presence of mind to make the catch, get the first down, let someone else run it in the end zone. Shedrick Malone back behind O'Neill. Harris in motion. O'Neill over the middle. Cut, touchdown, Ronnie Harris from nine yards out. Outstanding job by the offensive line. Not only did they uh, keep the Hawaii defenders out, but they opened up a nice lane right where O'Neill wanted to throw the ball. Good job by the guys up in the trenches. See how quickly he got the ball up there? I, I really like that when O'Neill steps up and throws the ball with authority. And the Oregon offense did to the Hawaii defense what the Oregon defense has had done to them. A little quick hitting. A little surprise the Ducks are going for one here instead of two. Well. Low snap. Thompson up and through the uprights. So they have cut the deficit back to 11 points. 24 to 13. So there's still a minute 20 to play third quarter. We could have a whole lot of fireworks coming down the stretch. So stick with us. Lager draft and draft light. Found it. Well, the Ducks have gotten back into this football game after uh, watching Hawaii score. They have countered with their own touchdown and now a trail by 11. Tommy Thompson to kick off with the wind, a very, very high deep kick. Branch will let it go into the end zone touchback. You know, I also wonder if. Uh, Rich Brooks didn't uh, go for the one point just to give Tommy Thompson a little confidence too because he may need Tommy Thompson to kick a field goal somewhere down the stretch here. That's right. You want to get him a little momentum. There's also a time to be desperate and a time uh, not to be. In this case, Ducks right. need a big play here on defense. Well, you see the scoring drive, nine plays, 73 yards uh, when the Ducks needed it. And on that drive, Danny O'Neill, five of seven for 64 yards, including the touchdown pass to uh, Ronnie Harris. Carter remains at quarterback. They give it to the first man through. He's got about three. Well, one thing, the Oregon defense has got to be disciplined. The man responsible for the dive has got to take him. The man responsible for the quarterback all the way down the line. That last drive, uh, I thought they lost their sense of discipline. Kind of guessing, trying to make things happen. They've got to just stop Hawaii here playing out. Michael Carter, fifth in the Western Athletic Conference last year in total offense. Led the team in scoring with 96 points. Running the ship right now. They give it to Travis Sims. He gets three more. And that'll set up a key third down and three. Well, the Oregon defense has a, a, a problem here. Are we going to keep defending the inside and maybe lend ourselves open to the option? Or we defend the option and open up the inside? That's a lot of pressure put on you with a good option offense. 
crowd making some noise, trying to help out the defense. Carter trying to audibleize. Fumble! Oregon has the football. Ernest Jones with the recovery. He was down, but he does get the recovery, and that was the turnover that the Ducks were looking for, Ken. Give a big assist to the crowd on this one. Just a couple minutes ago, they're all wondering whether they should take off early. They stayed, made a lot of noise. It got to the Hawaii team. That's just a big turnover the Ducks needed. Four seconds remain in the quarter, so the Ducks will have one play with the wind at their back. And now you punch one in. And you really got yourself old dog fight. Well, they've definitely got the rainbows on their heels now. They've got to take advantage of it. Jones in motion. O'Neill screen back to Burwell. Nice block by Dan Mitchell. He absolutely laid out a Hawaii defensive back. And Burwell has a first down as the quarter comes to a close. With 15 minutes left to play in the season opener, it's the Hawaii Rainbows leading the Ducks 24 to 13. And we head down to the final 15 minutes with the Oregon trailing, but with all the momentum. Let's take a look at that fumble again. You see Carter couldn't make up his mind. Looked like the, the, the fullback was trying to hang on to the ball, too, and that's something, you know, those are the kinds of things that happen when you start getting rattled. Oregon so, defense did a nice job getting pressure. The crowd had a lot to do with it, too. For $3,400. Here we go, the final 15 minutes. Oregon with a first and 10 at the Hawaii 14-yard line. O'Neill threw it behind Harris. It was open, but uh, O'Neill just a little bit off target. Oh, Danny O'Neill has had a pretty good day this afternoon. He's really picked it up here as of late. Quick release. He just didn't set his feet. And I'll tell you, you know, he's probably kind of excited out there, but I'll tell you, mechanics have a lot to do. He just can't afford to miss a guy who's going to run it in the end zone. 18 for 30, 219 yards. A touchdown and one interception. Well, they try to stuff it up the middle, and they get about two yards, maybe just one. So it'll be a big third down for the Ducks. It's a nice job, job there by the nose guard. Hawaii feels very good about their three down starters. They were injured uh, last year, but uh, they feel they've got three down people that are pretty darn good. Name their last names in less than 40 seconds. <laughs> Baumui, Tanabasi, and Tagoe. The most important page in the Hawaii press book, the pronunciation guide. O'Neill, straight back, out pattern to Vince Ferry. Vince Ferry rumbles down inside the five to the three. First down, Oregon. Vince Ferry taking the place of Jeff Thomas, Thomason, uh, who last year was a senior. And now it's Vince Ferry making the big catch. For a first down. Well, if the Hawaii coaches are trying to center in on any one Oregon offensive player, they can't. It's nice balance here. Tight end, running back, wide receiver. They're spreading it around. People will say, well, what happened was happened in the last two offensive series that didn't happen in the first half. Well, I think Oregon broke their formation, tried to spread the field a little bit. It's definitely had an effect. They're giving it inside to Shedrick, I believe. And he is at down near the goal line, about the one. So it'll be second and goal from the one. I mean, this place will erupt if the Ducks put it in the end zone. Todd McKim along with Ken Woody, and uh, we thought it would be exciting today. And after a sluggish start by both teams, it uh, has really become an offensive show. Run it inside to Shedrick, and he's going to. Lunge and lunge and lunge and who knows what happened. I think they're going to mark him about the half yard line. Here's where those Hawaii defenders have a bit of an advantage in that they are not the tallest guys in the world, but you talk about low center of gravity. They go 6'5", 6'2", 6' foot across the front line, but they're 267, 267, and 262. Trying to move fire hydrants out of there, and it's difficult. Well, the last 
last time the Ducks uh, were down here, they ran the end around. O'Neill to throw, backside pass intended for Ferry, off his fingertips incomplete. So now it is fourth and goal. Decision time for Rich Brooks. Tell he you trails what, by 11. I'll, you hate to see a Pac-10 concede that they can't make it on third and less than a yard. Ferry had a chance of being open there. But I mean, you know, it, that might have been the uh, Jeff Cummins. It was Jeff. It Cummins. was Jeff Cummins. 88 and 99 look a lot like Cummins. A defensive end comes in on goal line situations. Right here, if you can't score, maybe you don't deserve to win. Burwell left side touchdown. Sean Burwell penalty flag on the play. We have a penalty flag on the play. Looks like it's on Hawaii. A couple of Oregon players clapping their hands. Cut it, cut it. There's a hush at Otson Stadium. So much for the hush. <laughs> right when you said hush, everyone was quiet. So now the Ducks have the decision to go for one or two. And they can decide which hash mark they would like the ball to be on if they go for two. Well, it's so early now, and if I were Rich Brooks, I would probably think if there's a time when you could maybe uh, try to go for the two, this might be a time now with so much time left in the game, and they've established the fact they can now move the ball and can stop Hawaii. But if you go for two and they stop you, that kind of takes a little bit away from your touchdown and gives the other team a little lift. Defensive offsides on the scoring play on the defense. Oregon now has elected to take the penalty on the PAT, half the distance to the goal. That's, that's yep. interesting how you can do that. I Seems to me once a play is over, then the play is over. Yeah, you either get the penalty or the play. But who am I to complain? Well, it's a home game for Oregon. Maybe that's a... A home uh, home team rule. So instead of having to go three yards, the Ducks have to go one and a half yards for the two points. That certainly makes that one or two point decision a lot easier. The other rule. Going back all along is Jones. Two point conversion is good. And ladies and gentlemen, we got ourselves a three point ball game. Nicely executed play. They hung Jones in there a little bit. Fake the rollout to the right. Jones allowed everyone to overreact to the wide threat. Wide open. Yeah, you can't get any more wide open than that in a football game. So the Ducks have countered with two consecutive touchdowns after trailing 24 to 6. We never saw anything like this last year at any time the ability to come back and that's a, a real nice change I think everyone right now is probably thinking about that and the kickoff team's getting everybody excited it's not let up now Ducks are still behind yeah keep in mind that uh, Oregon still has to find a way to stop this Hawaii offense you see Burwell get up field fourth down get the hands in the ball get the ball in the hands of one of your best players Sean Burwell moving up on the all-time rushing list for the Ducks. He's got 55 yards today, and he's trying to uh, climb up into that top 10. He could do it if he uh, continues to go like he has so far today. So now the Ducks will be kicking off Tommy Thompson into a little bit of a breeze, and here's where that fourth quarter wind at the back of Hawaii plays in their favor. Remember, they elected to kick off into the wind to start the third quarter. Thompson's kick is high, but will come up a little bit short. Fielded at the eight. This is Harding. Oh, goodness. He is rejected at about the 22. Dan Mead down there. See who's on the bottom of that pile. Is that Michael Allison? I think it might be. We said early on the Rainbows wanted to get emotion on their side. Right now, although they have a lead, the emotion is entirely at the back of the Ducks. Keep in mind, uh, Jasper... Ivan Jasper injured a leg, so Carter has come back in at quarterback. He fumbled the last time he held the ball. 
They'll give it to the fullback, Travis Sims, and he bangs forward for six yards to the 28. Farwell on the stop, along with Paul Rodriguez and David Massey. Take a look at the scoring drive for Oregon. Eight plays, 25 yards. Burwell with the six-pointer. O'Neal to Jones on the two-pointer. And the big turnover by the defense gives the offense a short field. Case like this, the Oregon defense has got to maintain some kind of field position advantage. Cannot allow Hawaii to move the ball down that their offense has got to get it inside their 20. Ernest Jones limps off the field. He's starting outside linebacker. Dex will go with four down linemen in his stead. Here comes Carter. We'll try to pitch and now keeps it as he gets the first down to the 35. Can't say enough about number 68, Lenny Amosa, the center for the Rainbows. Does a nice job. You're not going to probably see it much, but he snapped the ball and then cut off the inside linebacker for the Ducks. And that's the thing that makes that inside running game go, is you, if you can block one of the linebackers, everyone else is running to a responsibility, and you don't get a lot of good run support. Joe Farwell came up limping a little bit on that last play. You take a look at Amosa, right in the middle there. You give it to the fullback, Travis Sims, and boy, he's a strong runner. He just carries people. Good for another six yards. And Amosa block number 39, David Massey. Massey is able to come around behind and tackle him from behind, but it's too far downfield as far as the Ducks are concerned. 11 and a half minutes to play. Rainbow's leading by three. Here's the advantage of having a good running team. You can eat up a little bit of clock and take a little bit of the emotion away from the defense. keeps being chased by Cummins Carter has another first down after a gain of 14 yards and now the rainbows have done exactly what they uh, wanted to do they've come back with a good drive they've uh, taken the crowd out of it and the defense now playing on its heels before the game Bill Taro linebacker coach was telling me one of the things that they really worried about they did not have a lot of fast people to run the skill positions on the scout team. They were concerned about what the real speed of Hawaii players would be like for their defense. They've struggled with that all afternoon. Hawaii with unofficially 320 yards of offense so far. Dean, I should say, uh, Travis Sims again gets the call inside for about four. Yeah, that's tough. It's very difficult to assimilate this kind of an offense in practice. Uh, first of all, there aren't a lot of teams in the country that run it. And there's probably a good reason for that because you, it's tough to find quarterbacks sure. that can both run and pass. Therefore, on a team that uh, doesn't feature that offense at all, it's very difficult to find somebody on your scout team that's ever done that. When Terrell told me that one of their best slot backs was a scout team kicker, I knew they might uh, be having some problems. Counter play to Sims, and he's racked up after a gain of one. So a big third down and five. The clock winds down to the 10-minute mark. Now this, I, it's, it may be premature to say this is it, but this is it right here, third down. As, Give a, as hot as the Oregon offense is right now, you like to get them back on the field and uh, have them sustain some momentum. Sims now over 100 yards rushing, 124 yards and 22 carries. So two Hawaii runners near that 100-yard mark or over. Timeout called by Michael Carter, and he saw Paul Rodriguez, the Oregon strong safety, right up on the line of scrimmage, and I think he was a little leery that the play he had called might not have worked, so he called timeout. Nine and a half to play here at Onsen Stadium. The season opener has been all that it's been advertised to be. The Rainbow is leading by three. Third and five for the Rainbows at the Oregon 40-yard line. Oh, the Ducks smelled that one out. Now it's Mano a mano and uh, Carter falls. Rodriguez did a tremendous job as Hawaii wanted to just flip the ball out on a little slip screen, and Rodriguez smelled it out, had the uh, running back covered. Carter was going to try to run for the first down, but lost three. Hawaii caught him in a blitz in the first half. Ducks remembered it. I think they suckered him into that play. 
Great job by Rodriguez. So the Rainbows have to punt it away. And they don't get a shot at the field goal, even though they got the wind at their backs. Elam try to hang it up high, and uh, he certainly does, although the wind may carry this one in towards the end. Oh, it hit the guy on the helmet. It hit him on the helmet. What a tremendous break for Hawaii. Instead of the ball being a touchback, they will down it at the six. Number 23, I think that's Harding down there. Yeah, Matt Harding, a 5'9 freshman from San Dimas. And you talk about using your head. He used it literally. Well, there, he was also fortunate that his feet were not in the end zone at the time because the ball would have come back. That's a real bad break for the Ducks. And well, the Ducks trailing by three now have to march 94 yards. who hesitates is tackled normally in football but Harris manages to get it out close to the 20 and a first down Carlos Anderson the cornerback over there made the stop but it's a first down for the Ducks well since the Ducks have spread the field with their formation and gone to primarily quick hitting pass plays O'Neill's really got into a nice little rhythm got to maintain his concentration work on the little things Coach Bellotti has said at times his footwork gets him gets himself in trouble. Neil to pass. No, he'll keep it. Run up field, baby. You know, I asked the uh, Mike Bellotti whether or not O'Neill had the green light to run and what were the conditions under which he could run. He said he certainly has the green light to run. We just want to make sure he understands when he gets up field that he's not trying to run over somebody, that he gets down, he tries to protect himself. Remember a couple of years, Bill Musgrave got uh, popped in the collarbone and that uh, ruined Oregon's season. Well, th th I think the advice uh, clearly put, or simply put is get up field and get down. When you're running sideways is when more than one guy can hit you. A lot of times in the back of ribs. Here's the drop play. Sean Burwell, about four more yards. Burwell out to the 27-yard line. Stu Williams, outside linebacker from Honolulu, made the stop. So now it's third and two. And we saw the defense do a great job on third down. Here's a case where the offense has got a third down. They've got to respond to the challenge. Yeah, with the clock winding at 7-10, you probably will not get many more opportunities to handle the football. Not against a good running team. Hawaii, nine men at the line of scrimmage. Ball is deflected at the line of scrimmage once again. This time it's Taasi Fumui. And the Ducks have to punt it away. Well, the best defense, I guess, against the pass is those guys up front. Well, the Ducks have had a lot of success throwing the ball outside. And a uh, situation like that, you kind of eliminate the chance of the ball getting knocked down. That, that's a little higher risk play. Right now, I'm sure they're second guessing themselves, wish they had called something different. O'Neill, uh, remember, is only six foot two, and uh, not the biggest guy or tallest guy. So now Thompson has had a great day punting, booted away. Very high spiral kick to the branch move field at his own 32, and he'll be dropped at the 31. Again, great coverage. Michael Allison, who snaps on the punts, down there along with Mark Sliman. So the onus squarely on the Oregon defense right now. They must stop Hawaii on this drive or face the prospects of uh, not being able to get the ball back with much time remaining. 41-yard punt, no return. Well, the other thing besides stopping Hawaii, they can't allow them to get a couple first downs, use up the clock, and put the offense in poor field position again. Trip to the left side with Branch. Gordon is slotted to the hash mark. Here comes the reverse option. Carter, he's kind of weaving his way. I always thought that option quarterbacks had to be the coolest cucumbers in the world. They have to make decisions. They can't do things too fast. 
yet they have to do them fast enough to get them done correctly. Well, the one thing coaches have got to keep in mind, though, that even on running plays, you're forcing them to make a decision so that times you can, you can you, mentally, you can kind of burn them out. They need a chance to be able to just hand it off and not read something. Good point. doing he'll lose two hey, I'll tell you what number 99 Parker, Jeff Cummins is just playing a heck of a game he's all around the ball and he does a great job of stringing out the option getting the quarterback an inspirational leader right there number 99 it was really frustrated and they had a toe injury last year and didn't get a chance to play look at him check the fullback feather out and make the tackle on the quarterback third and seven Carter to roll, Carter to throw, Carter down the middle, it is incomplete. Herman O'Berry batted it away. That's a gutty call by Hawaii because they risked an interception. They've not been the most proficient passing team, and particularly since that first uh, completion in the game. Nice job by the defense, and that stops the clock. That, that saved the Ducks 30 seconds. So Elam will boot it away. Good job by the defense of maintaining a field position advantage for the Ducks. Elam, have an end over ender that Harris will have an opportunity to return. Set up the block. And a very, very, very late flag that might have been thrown as the ball carrier was going out of bounds, but I think it's against Oregon, uh, maybe getting a hit in the back. Look at Bob Wagner there. You bet the old nerves are going now. Well, I think that's going to go against the Ducks. You always, as a coach, you hate to see a guy about half a mile away throw a, a penalty, and everyone else closer to it is not seeing it. Well, the kicking game has been a factor today, to say the least. I mean, let's face it, Elam has been perfect. And the Oregon the even on some returns on have made uh, return, some mistakes. That's the second the time, the Ken, foul. they've been uh, guilty of an infraction. So the kicking game, you know, and you never know about the kicking game in the first game of the season, do you? I mean, you never know how those new guys respond on the return teams, the wedge responsibilities. Well, you know, if you're a percentage player, you say, well, if the ball's on the 20-yard line, what are your percentages of scoring as opposed to on the 10? Believe me, they go way down, and just that 10 yards makes a difference. This may be just a, a do-or-die situation for the Ducks now. 5-14 to play. O'Neal throwing out the flat for Berwick. Breaks one tackle, breaks two tackles. Sean Burwell out to the 31-yard line, gain of 21. Well, the Ducks now are doing a nice job of overcoming the, their mistakes. This is something they were not doing in the first half. To be honest with you, sometimes they compounded them. But there's a great job by Burwell of overcoming the mistake of a guy in the kicking team. Clock continues to wind as we move to the five minutes mark. I'll tell you what, 20 yards in, in 10 seconds puts a lot less pressure on your offense as far as the clock is concerned now. Don't pass to Burwell, and he gets about five. He'll pass to Burwell. Hawaii is calling for a fumble, but they will rule that Burwell was down when the ball came loose. We understand that Ivan Jasper four, will probably six. not return after bruising his right leg. Uh, X-rays were negative, so that's good news for Hawaii. And that's a little bit of good news for the Ducks, too, because when both he and Carter were in the game, they had a real difficult time shutting them down. And I think that Jasper was the better of the two as, a, as far as a passing threat went. I think you're probably right, even though they both thrown for one touchdown. <laughs> Over the middle, caught, first down. Again, Sean Burwell, gain of eight, and the teams will move. The clock will stop with 4.08 to play. Well, you know, the, Hawaii has a very young secondary. The senior who's playing there hasn't played in two years. Right now, the Ducks are taking advantage of a lot of that inexperience. Now the clock winds. Under four minutes to go. The Ducks have all three timeouts at their disposal. On 
Once again, an Oregon offensive lineman, a little hasty. It looked like from Matt Martin, they left tackle, got that left hand up a little quick, and so they'll mark it off five yards. The clock stops while they march off the five yards. Well, Matt's a senior, and you don't Good expect ball. those kinds of Both things to happen. Offense. Five yards. Really hurts. You know, a five freshman yards, does it. Maybe that's a little bit understandable, but a senior, you got to have a little more discipline than that. Matt has missed a lot of the fall camp. He hasn't had a lot of reps because of an injury to his back. Yeah, sometimes you don't get all those reps. Uh, you know, it's as much a mental game as it is physical. Sure is. I'll tell you what, at this stage of the game, everybody's got to be thinking. Can't expect, can't afford mental mistakes. O'Neill, the loud pattern to Denweiler. Denweiler, he is out of bounds after picking up seven. And he stops the clock. Well, at this point, it's almost a, you can't make a big mistake. You can't really goof up. You can afford a little mistake, a five-yard penalty, but a major mistake, a turnover of a 15-yarder would really make it difficult. But one senses at this point in the game that Oregon has found an offensive rhythm, and it's just a matter of executing the plays that are called, and they'll be given an opportunity to score. Make the... Uh, Little draw play, and uh, that was just a bad pass well, by Danny O'Neill. If he completes that ball, it's going to be a 15 to 20 yard gain. That was just plain sloppy. You know, you mentioned that, that, that maybe you can afford a five yard penalty. In, in a sense, you can because you're, you're going to probably go for it on fourth down one way or another, so you have an extra down. Third down but, uh, I would hate to think the players would think that way because that's just the kind of attitude that gets you in a hole. It's now third and eight. And this is uh, the most important play for the next this afternoon. They need to get the first down. They don't want to have to punt it away. O'Neill, out pattern, caught by Anthony Jones. First down, will he get out of bounds? Indeed he does. First down at the 34. So the go-to guy, Anthony Jones, who led the Ducks in receiving a year ago. Nothing fancy, just a simple down and stop pattern. O'Neill takes advantage of the fact that Jones is in man-to-man -man coverage here, and they're allowing the Oregon receivers a lot of room deep. But you look at O'Neill here. He sets his feet, throws the ball to the wide side of the field. That's a long throw. Get the ball on the outside arm away from the defensive back. Get out of bounds if you can. Nice job. The Ducks trailing by three with 3.22 remaining. Interesting to see that they've now gone to just a two-wide receiver formation. Burwell got a good job uh, of blocking over there by the fullback Shedrick as he took on the inside backer Lou Randall and Burwell then cut off the block and picked up five. Burwell this afternoon now has 64 yards rushing on the day. Hasn't had a lot of attempts. He needed 62 yards to pass Mel Renfro as the 10th leading rusher in Oregon history and he has done that right now. Next up uh, on the list will be Latin Berry who's uh, some 28 yards away now. Safety Here comes the blitz. Safety blitz. O'Neill out pattern, caught by Detweiler, stayed inbounds. First down to Oregon. Oh, oh, goodness. Great catch. The defensive back was right there. Zach Odom, the left corner, he was all over Detweiler. You look at Detweiler, he is zeroing in on that football. That's a great catch. Gets his foot down. Thank goodness we're not in the NFL. Didn't have two feet in. Dead Weiler, a 5'9 junior from San Diego Mesa, J.C., now has eight receptions for 103 yards. I'll tell you, when he concentrates, he's a great catcher of the football. Hawaii got a blitz again. Yep, exactly. O'Neill lost the football, and Hawaii has it. O'Neill, concerned about getting out of there with a the blitz coming, dropped the football, left it on the carpet, and the rainbows come up with the pigskin, the fourth turnover of the second half, and maybe the killer. Everything going in Oregon's direction, and O'Neill forgot the basic uh, it's all fundamentals. fundamental play. You got to have the football to do anything else, and he forgot it. Well, in a situation like that, even had they sacked him, it was first down, lots of time, great field position. That's a mental mistake the Ducks just can't afford. So, 2.37 to play. The Ducks have three timeouts remaining. But now they really have to hope for a mistake. Got to get Hawaii in long yardage and then call timeout. Hawaii just wants to pound it inside and run the clock. 
Travis Sims made the stop. Jeff Cummins calls for and gets a timeout. So the Ducks are saying that this is the series that will decide the football game. We can't let any more time roll off the clock. Well, Coach Wagner is going to talk to the quarterback here. In a situation like this, you might look for Hawaii to sprint out and have the quarterback run the football. 5 Oregon miscues today. 4 in this half, 3 in the third quarter. And really none of them were around midfield. They were either in Hawaii's end or at their own end. Well, I guess on that last series Hawaii said, "Hey, we, uh, we can't stop you throwing the football, so we're going to have to force you to make some kind of a mistake. It's kind of a do or die right here at the 20-yard line. Well, it's a shame when the threat of a defense stops you as opposed to the actual defensive execution. The fact that they were blitzing, O'Neal knew it. He was trying to get back there and get the ball off quickly. He knew he had man-to-man -man coverage. Hawaii's had a difficult time covering the Ducks, but the only oh, kicker oh, oh. to it is if you don't have the ball, it doesn't matter. Second down and 10. Upon it into the fullback, he'll get two more. Travis Sims has been the workhorse for Hawaii's rushing attack today. And again, the Ducks will call timeout after a gain of two. If I were Hawaii, I'd find where Cummins is and run the other way. He is uh, right there. He, he's stopping the, stopping the rainbows all by himself. So Michael Carter will come to the sideline to uh, talk to the Hawaii Brain Trust. The Ducks now have only one timeout remaining. Well, catch live Pac-10 football Saturday as the Washington State Cougars head to the heat to take on the Arizona Wildcats. Saturday, that's live at 3.30 here on Prime Sports Northwest. Cougars, one of the most explosive offenses and in uh, some magazines and uh, people's opinions, maybe the best quarterback in college football this year. Drew Bledsoe, big strong-armed young man. He can really throw the football. The Cougars have got a much improved defense, a lot of speed. People will be interested to see how they hold up against a quality uh, Pac-10 opponent. Arizona had problems of their own last year, but they're supposed to be much improved. Well, they had so many people injured. You know, it's interesting. There's a sports quiz question for you. Uh, what two teams have the record for the longest losing streak in the Pac-10 going into today? I would say Oregon and SC. Oregon and SC. You, well, you looked at the answer cards. So that's not fair, but... <laughs> You know, it's been, it's been a long time since the team with the longest losing streak in Oregon has been the Ducks and not the Beavers. Third down, Hawaii is only three of 12 on third down attempts. Carter, he's gonna have the first down and he's gonna have more and that might do it right there. The Ducks gambled on defense and uh, Hawaii picked up a critical first down and now the Ducks can only stop the clock one more time by themselves. Number seven, Chad Cotto was responsible for the quarterback and he got blocked. Just an outstanding job by the Hawaii D offense. 2.19 remaining, one timeout for Oregon. The clock now starts. Let's see how much time on each possession Hawaii takes off that uh, 25 second clock. See how close they wind it down to zero. Snapped it with six seconds left. Tracy Sims has got about seven in one sense as the air has come out of the sails of that Oregon defense. Now they take their final time out with 152 to play. Well, if there are any people out there who are looking around for an offense and, and want to see just exactly what bothers defensive coaches the most, Hawaii has put on a clinic today. They've executed, their quarterbacks have done a great job. You know, you just imagine what they would be like if they were a great throwing team. So let's take a break. 152 to play in the Hawaii with the football and the lead. Well, the situation grim for the Ducks as they are faced with trying to somehow steal the football away. Hawaii's got a second down and about four. And now it's got to sell out the farm here for the Ducks. They have to have a turnover or they don't win the football game. Well, and the other thing is if Hawaii gets a first down here, the quarterback can just fall down and the Oregon defense won't get a chance to force a fumble. At least third down two. If they can keep them from getting a first down, Hawaii will try to advance it and maybe you can knock it loose. 
Hawaii has rushed to for 297 yards. The Ducks only 86. Third down and two, and the clock down to 118. Carter, first down. And he's got a lot of life in him still, and the Oregon defense Carter on the does keeper. not. And the Hawaii Rainbows are going to come away with a big victory unless some unbelievably disastrous thing happens to the uh, Rainbows on the next play. A tremendous victory for Hawaii, a very disappointing opening for the Ducks, who now see the fans head to the exits. Well, you know, it's it, the Oregon defense, we know they're well coached and, and traditionally one of the top three teams in the league in defense. It's not a case that they've been overpowered as much as just outboxed. No timeouts remaining. Carter only has to take the snap and kneel down to go forward and pick up a couple. And that'll That's might be the last Carter play of the game. Keeper. It would be easy to malign Oregon's defense, but I'll tell you what, as yeah, speaking as an old coach, uh, Hawaii's got to be real proud of the way they've run their offense today. Well, in all honesty, you look at Hawaii a year ago, and uh, not too many teams held them down. They scored 10 against Iowa, 16 against Colorado State, 18 against the BYU, and 20 against the Air Force. And after that, it was 24 or more, including, I mean, they put up incredible numbers. They had 52 against Utah, 42 against Notre Dame. And that'll do it as the clock runs down and the Hawaii Rainbows come away with a stunning victory over the Oregon Ducks. Final score from Watson Stadium, Hawaii 24 and Oregon 21. We'll be back in a moment. Well, there you see the final numbers as the Hawaii Rainbows start their season with a 24-21 hold on at the end victory over the Oregon Ducks. And uh, Ken, it was a, a game that uh, kind of was in two chapters, really. Uh, the first uh, two quarters and maybe 13 minutes seemed to be all Hawaii. They dominated play. Then the Oregon the offense finally got on track, was moving the football, but it came down to one critical play. The Ducks driving for the go-ahead score, at least maybe a tying field goal, and Danny O'Neill unable to uh, correctly execute the exchange from center and uh, that was the ball game well you know we said it at the head of the show uh in the keys could hawaii outrush the ducks yes could they rattle the offense yes particularly that last fumble by o'neill could the ducks make the uh, hawaii pass no do they have a leader well we're not sure right now uh that was a nice little spurt at the end but there's a bad feeling in a lot of oregon fans right now uh, what kind of team do they have this year well they executed offensively after they finally uh, found what they could do against Hawaii and on the last what three out of the last four possessions moved the ball in fact moved the ball with pretty good rapidity throughout most of the day but when you turn the ball over four turnovers in the second half five for the game it's tough to beat anybody well give the Ducks credit for showing a little bit of heart and a little bit of moxie but you know the thing is it's a thinking man's game mental mistakes will kill you they're not good enough evidently to overcome their own mental mistakes well, it's only the first game of the season. We've got a long way to go in this 92 campaign. The Ducks will take on that Stanford next week down on the farm against a club that lost on in its opener to Texas A&M in the Pigskin Classic. Be sure to catch the next televised Duck football game next Monday at 8 o'clock as the Ducks take on the Stanford Cardinal Monday at 8 o'clock here on Prime Sports Northwest. Stay tuned for Horse World. Up next here on Prime Sports Northwest, Ken Woody can't wait. So the final score, Hawaii 24, Oregon 21. For Ken Woody, I'm Todd McKim. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Oregon Ducks football on Prime Sports Northwest was brought to you by new Rainier Ice Logger Draft and Rainier Ice Logger Draft Light.